Welcome back to the ALGS Rundown. We just finished the first round robin in ALGS Pro League Split 1, and it's time to get you up to speed with how the league looks after the first three match days. Match day one in North America, Dark Zero took first in signature style. An observed 54 kill day along with a win and two top threes left everyone else fighting in their shadow. IGL Zero wasn't content to leave the kills to his controller teammates, so he got 21 eliminations himself. TSM followed up with a score that would have net them the win on any other day. After stringing two wins together and getting 35 eliminations over the six games played, E8 got third overall after a very consistent day, finishing in the top five in over half of the games played throughout the series. PLP, led by Phony, stamped their name at the top of the day three leaderboard, a huge result for them with two wins and a third place, which was enough to secure them seventh in the overall leaderboards. Second place complexity showed they're more than capable of hanging in these lobbies by placing top 10 in five of the six games played, including a win. Dark Zero produced another solid day with a third place finish just ahead of Furia, whose 17 kill game was enough for them to take fourth. Let's take a look at the overall leaderboard for North America as we finish the first round robin. No surprises in the top three, Dark Zero, Luminosity, and TSM. Of the three, TSM are the only team still searching for their first match day win. Luminosity gave us a statement performance, so maybe now the doubters will put some respect on their name. Fan favorites Boogie Boarders jumped out to an early lead in APAC South after a nuclear match day one performance. Fussy racked up an outrageous 25 kills over the six games as the Boarders picked up two wins. Lightning Unicorn had a solid day and finished second, but couldn't find the eliminations to challenge the top spot. From a washout to a nail biter, match day two saw Serenity clinch the win, which is five points separating them from third place team Iron Blood Gaming and a massive drop off to the fourth place finisher. The top three teams traded haymakers all day, Wonton Dumpling even dropping a huge 23 kill dub, but Serenity had that extra consistency finishing in the top three out of six games, enough to propel them into first place. After a high scoring day two, match day three was a bloodbath with just about everyone getting their time at the top. In the end, just 54 points was enough to secure the win for MDY White, with LD putting up 12 eliminations to push them over the line. After the dust has settled, there's a two-way tie at the top of the standings with Boogie Boarders and Wonton Dumpling both netting themselves 37 points, with Lightning Unicorn and MDY White in hot pursuit. Great news for burger enjoyers, Team Burger returns to APAC South. Way and Pricey picked up former Dark Zero champion Sharky, and they had a good comeback week, finishing in eighth overall. On January 19th, Reject announced their return to Pro League and they wasted no time getting to work. They annihilated match day one with 48 kills, averaging eight kills per game, even managing to squeeze five kills out of an 18 place finish. Riddle proved their consistency on day one with three second place finishes and Crazy Raccoon's new roster fought their way to third. Day two was Fnatic's day. Not to be outdone by Reject, Fnatic's new roster cemented themselves as a big contender for the crown. 39 kills, a win, and two second places, no warm-up time needed for that roster. Riddle zone playstyle guided by Saku earned them another second place finish, despite having a couple zero point games late in the day. Consistency is key in Pro League and these guys have got it in spades. Day three was taken by Kinetrope Gaming. After a cold day one, KN dropped 88 points on the match day with a huge 17 kill win. This catapulted themselves up the leaderboard. Mia K and Arufa putting up 17 and 18 kills respectively. Look, this is a team to watch going forward. Fnatic finished the round Robin Strong with a second placed finish, killing their way up the leaderboard, despite only getting 21 placement points. Looking at the standings after the first round Robins finished in APAC North, we have Fnatic in first, Riddle in second, and Reject Winity in third. Fnatic meet expectations and they look poised to dominate the region. 
Riddle has put together two very strong showings and Rejects Nuclear Day 1 covered for a bit of a slide on their second match day. In a global conversation about controller versus M and K, only two out of the top nine placing players in APAC North are on the sticks. Is it a coincidence that those players just happen to be on the same team who are also first place this week? Match day one sees K Swinney lead the revamped E6 to a first place finish with 36 kill points, a win, and a third place. The Italian org outplayed also had a really solid day, but couldn't match E6 kill power and finished two points behind the leaders despite winning two games. Some eyebrows raised as Alliance didn't really get the ball rolling early and they finished 13th. Aurora turned up in winning form on day two, with Hardecki's return to Pro League being a huge splash, dropping 15 kills, tying for kill leader with his fragger Oirain as Aurora clear second place by 22 points. Back-to-back -back wins in rounds two and three pushed them to the top of the leaderboards despite some medium games later in the day. Nasky's Team 07 improved on their day one finish of fourth with a third place in day two, picking up where Aurora left off, winning two back-to-back -back in rounds five and six to finish the day strong. At the start of the season, there were concerns about how Nasky would handle being without his longtime duo, Serdell. Looks like he's putting those concerns to rest with a flying start to the first split. Day three in Max Strafe's team, well, Max Strafe's team if you're Nasky, you aim got a blinder of a day with two back-to-back -back finishes. They struggled to maintain their pace off the line, but their early kills and placement proved enough to keep them in first place at the end of the day. Aurora put together two more wins and got a second place finish in the last game of the day. Despite a fairly low kill score on day three, their solid performance got them second. At the end of the round robin, Aurora has a comfortable space at the top with U aim barely hanging on to second by a point. There's a tie at the number three spot with 07 and OAH both on 34 points. EMEA is shaping up to be a close spot region with a lot of teams having the ability to jump up the leaderboard with just a good performance in the weeks to come. Alliance make up for the rough first two days with a nine kill win in the final game of day three, pushing them up to 12th in the standings. And we've got some roster shifts as Kishera's team Vamo Kiera parts ways with their South American import Kings and pick up Cash's old duo post kill. Will the change be enough to propel them up from their current spot in 16th? Only time will tell. Pro League is back this weekend as we kick off the second round robin with APAC South back in action on February 3rd. Make sure you join us for all the action on broadcast and follow us on socials for all the news and updates as they happen. Welcome back to year four of ALGS split one day four and happy fifth anniversary to Apex Legends. I am so excited to because last week we saw the end of the first round Robin run. So we're going back around and we're going to see teams A and B go back at it again. And today I am joined by Sir Onset. Hello. I don't think I'd officially be knighted, but it's great to do it on broadcast in front of everyone else. So thank you very much for that. Uh, great to be here. Of course, North America is where we turn our, our focus of attention now. Uh, Amir was great a little bit earlier, but like I mentioned, we're a third of the way through the season now, which is crazy to say out loud. It means that points are at a premium and there's no more room for mistakes. Yeah, if I had the Wraith heirloom out right now, I'm packing for a move. I totally would have knighted you with that, but you know, that's fine. And of course, joining us is the wonderful Gaskin. Hello. Hello, I thought you would knight people with the Octane heirloom because I've heard your preference and you have made it clear to me, but it's okay. We know the Wraith heirloom is better. I'm glad you agree. Very excited for North America. And, you know, I can't wait to see what these teams are going to do. It's quite tight at the top between some of the biggest and best teams, but I'm sure they're ready to put on a show. You are so lucky that you live a few states away, all right? Like, you're, you're lucky mm -hmm. that you're mm -hmm. quite a few distance away from me because uh, we, we, would, we would fight. Right. Anyways, so <clears throat> Octane's heirloom is... is 
the best. But anyways, uh, I'm very excited for NA today. We obviously have a lot of teams playing uh, that we have already seen. And I know that the chat is extremely excited for. But we do have to talk about some team announcement news that did drop. So we're going to be talking about that. And obviously leading into match day number four. Now, first up, we do have Space Station Gaming saying they couldn't keep us away forever. And Onset, I mean, look at the new roster and... I'm really excited. Hey, look, I, I'm no. Everybody knows I love Space Station, all right? One of the best <laughs> orgs out there. The group of wonderful people who really do get it, and I'm very excited that they picked up this roster. I actually got an official uh, statement from SSG. Uh, I'll just read it out now for everyone. They said, "I think it's hilarious you kids talk trash about SSG. You wouldn't say that to them at land. They're jacked. Not only that, but they wear the freshest clothes. They eat the chillest restaurant and hang out with the hottest dudes. So that's a statement from Space Station Gaming themselves on this roster. And I think they're going to be a lot of fun. We know." That former PLP, there's a lot of talent here, and the fact they're under the Space Station Gaming banner is uh, is wonderful to see. Uh, yes, <laughs> what what a great copy pasta! I'm I'm so excited for that. All right, next up we do have Gaming Gladiators, and they will be joining the Apex Games for this week's matches. They will still be known as Flat, just as a clarification. But starting with next week's matches, Gaming Gladiators will be official. So, Gaskin, how do you feel about this announcement? Yeah, very excited for Game Gladiators to be back in the scene. I mean, they had a team in EMEA for a while, a North American team as well. I mean, I think that that's fantastic to see any sort of organization to branch out into different regions. And I think these guys are going to kill it. They say, see you at the Coliseum. So, all right, we'll see you there. Yeah, I, I love that statement so much. That's so cool. And yes, here is the PLP roster becoming SSG. So very excited for that. And we all know Onset is a huge fan of SSG. So congratulations to him for, you know, all the success with SSG because it was all his doing, right? Obviously. It was not. <laughs> just, just to clear that up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the overall standings. Now we did see two series already with these teams. So we get to look at the overall standings here. And of course, Zark Zero is at first with 43 points, but LG is not far off in second place with 41, Gaskin. Yeah, and this is where the bonus points that were added to the format could come into effect, right? Because if you are winning groups, then you are going to be very close to people. Dark Zero, they were able to get victory. LG were able to get a victory. TSM, not far behind as well. If you can have a very dominant match week where you do find bonus points, then it is really going to elevate you through. And now I see the Elevate 6th, and I feel silly for saying Elevate. Uh, but there's so <laughs> many top-tier rosters here in North America, and... This is how it looks right now, but I guarantee it's going to look very different when we come around once more. Yeah, and then of course, on our second page on set, we do see Oblivion and Optic Gaming and Meat Lovers all lined up here in 11th to 20th place. We do indeed, and I think we have to always talk about the bottom of the leaderboards. We always talk about the top as well, but there's a couple of teams. Oxygen Esports, I think very surprising to see them down there. They're going to make a change ahead of today with where they're dropping. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, FaZe had a good game day one, but game day two was not too great. Uh, and then Optic Gaming in the middle as well. Still looking for a little bit of form. We know they've been hit by the beacon changes a little bit themselves with their uh, their drop over at the mill. So a lot to, uh, to keep an eye on here. And uh, excuse me, over at Down Beast, I will correct myself there. But a lot of these teams at the bottom here, Exet as well, then, I mean, surprising to see them down there. But a lot of work to be done and a lot of time still ahead. Yeah, I mean, these are teams that are obviously very good at what they do, especially with Skirt and Native Gaming. It is a little interesting to see them be on the 21 to 30 path here as well. But I'm really interested to see how Evolution is going to do, Gaskin, because we did see that they had some pretty good moves, but they just weren't able to keep up that consistency, which is huge for Apex. Yeah, and it's not the end of the world if you find yourself in the bottom 10 after a, after a few match days, but this is the time. We spoke about it in EMEA where you really have to knuckle down. You have to start to think about those changes. If you were in a contest, is it worth taking that contest? If you are struggling with the composition, should you be changing to something a little bit more aggressive, more defensive? All these questions really kind of have to start being answered now. Otherwise, you will start to fall behind. Yeah, and speaking of all these questions being answered now, we're going to get our questions answered about these teams, Group A and B, showing up today. I am really excited to see Dark Zero and TSM, or not, yeah, TSM go up against each other again, because day one we did see it was kind of their game, but 
obviously LG is here, Flat is here. We're going to see a lot of action today on set. We certainly are indeed. And I think the story of Dark Zero and TSM is one that we've all heard, but the story continues, right? It's a, a battle at the top between those two. Uh, LG certainly stepping up. And I think their last week was absolutely phenomenal. So uh, LG really starting to find form a little bit quicker than I think a lot of people actually expected. And their performances have been uh, really, really good. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they get on today. Yeah, I was one of those people. I honestly thought LG was going to be a little bit slower in finding their footing, but they actually found the rhythm as a team. And you know what? While we're here, let's just go ahead and talk about the teams that are doing better than expected, which is obviously Luminosity. We do have to talk about that because I really thought that after game day number one, they were going to take things slower, but they really stunned us with their performance day two. And it's not that day one was bad by any means. It was not. So LG is made up by Funk, Sweet, and Slayer. And their second place overall standings, right? And you can see that they're pretty even in Stormpoint and World's Edge with their rate of success. So they're feeling pretty confident. We see just how aggressive they can be, but they're also incredibly smart about which fights they do decide to take. Because again, like we keep saying, Apex is all about capitalizing off of your enemy's mistakes and they are not wanting to make any mistakes. So, Going into that, let's talk about complexity on set. Yeah, Kimchi, Monsoon, and Lou, what a game day they had in the second one. 21 points they managed to put up. It was only eight points in the first week, but Monsoon started picking up a Sentinel and uh, certainly teaching some people some severe lessons with that weapon in that second game day. And uh, I'm interested to see how they get on today. I did see that Kimchi may be uh, hoping some internet comes back because uh, there was a storm in the area or something, but hopefully they can play as that full roster. World's Edge has been their success, more successful, excuse me, map in comparison to Stormpoint, but still a good amount of points being picked up on both from a world's edge team to a storm point team we've got drop in gaming who might not have had the best of times in a and b last time we saw them around but i mean stunny crook and jay are a incredible squad who in day two or match two should i say really started to find their form and find their footing i think they are a genuine threat to everyone in this lobby who have to be concerned if they end up going up in a 3v3 against them yeah, and we just got word from our producers that Complexity will be taking in Reptar as a sub for match one until Kimchi gets his internet sorted out, which we're actually in kind of the same area. So the storm's hitting us pretty hard, but you know what? It's It almost feels like we're in Stormpoint, right? It's it's great. Mm. It's setting the theme. So very excited about that. I know that was bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about teams that are performing way better than we expected. So let's go ahead and talk about teams performing it where exactly we thought, which is not a bad thing at all. It just means that we know what to expect. So before we go into that, let's go ahead and listen to Stunny talk about his team and their new strategies. Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Stunny. I'm a pro player for Drop In Gaming. Our current roster consists of Karma, also known as Jayon, Crook, Assault, and our coach Kapreem. So about a year ago, I was with a different roster with Drop In Gaming. Uh, I wasn't the happiest with that roster, so I ended up letting go of two of those players, and Crook and Oreos ended up coming up. Picked both of them up, and eventually Sentinels took Oreos from us, so we emergency replaced him with Karma. Uh, no, we actually won't be changing anything this time around, but we're luckily not double contested on both maps, so that's very nice. Uh, so we will be doing a lot better now that we can actually play the game. Yeah, so we noticed that we weren't leaving from our POI as quickly as we'd like to, so in this... Uh, this weekend, we will definitely be changing that. We'll be landing, looting, and rotating a lot faster than we have been recently. Yeah, I mean, Gaskin not being contested on either maps is a huge boon to them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think every team at this point is just hoping no one is going to be contesting them because we've seen how much it can harm and hurt those teams. So they're going to try and loot a little bit faster, get out of their POI a little bit faster. They had success in match uh, day number two, so we'll see if that carries on here until their third attempt. Absolutely. And as promised, we are going to be talking about those teams that are performing exactly where we expected. So I have to start by talking about TSM. And I know, oh, Stella, you talked about TSM last week. And I will continue to talk about TSM because they are a team that are in this for the long haul. So TSM with Verholst, Imperial Hal, and Reps, they are an incredible team. And day one was really a TSM and Dark Zero battle. And TSM did win two matches, but they did end up coming into second place with 16 points under Dark Zero. So this is their chance to take first place back from Dark Zero and kind of hand it back to them. And I do remember TSM getting the short end of the stick last match that we saw them play. But overall, TSM has been very consistent and I fully expect them to bounce back today on set. Yeah, I picked Elevate Gaming as a business as usual. And it might seem like, a, why aren't you talking about Luminosity? You know, LG are up there and 
but I understand why it was very difficult to decide between the two. But the reason I've gone with Elevate is because I felt coming into this season of Pro League that they were going to be one of those teams who were super consistent from week to week, and they've proved that so far. Look at their Storm Point World's Edge split. It's pretty much the same. There's only five points difference between the two. They've always put themselves in good places. Their team fighting and their synergy seems to be there as well. And I've been really impressed with the some of their rotates they're making and some of the uh, the difficult paths that they're having to take on some far zones and how they're managing to navigate that. So shout out to Zach Major on some of the calls that he's making, but his two teammates backing him up all along the way with their fragging ability. I think Elevate have looked really strong. I like that you picked Elevate because, you know, the same percentages as Dark Zero, but Dark Zero are doing it with far more points. Zero Sykes and Jem Burton. I mean, I was wondering how Sykes would be on this roster. Would he fit in? Would he deal with the pressure? Absolutely. Listen so well to instruction that's coming from the IGL. Will always be either initiating the fight or joining the fight at the right time. And I love the addition of Sykes. And I really do think this Dark Zero roster is just going to carry on going from strength to strength here, Stella. And they are number one team at the moment in North America. I know, and they're good for it. I am so excited to see the performances that all of these teams give us today. And I do want to talk about other teams that we might want to kind of boost up and we want to see them do better, right? Because we're obviously going into our next round of round robin. So I want to talk about DNO Gaming, Dudes Night Out. They have a solid roster with two x Sentinel players, but they were really struggling to grasp at points in survival past 10th placed in most matches. So you can see on Storm Point, they're a little bit stronger with 67% of their points coming from there, but 33% on World's Edge. You want to be strong on this map. That is a classic to Apex Esports. They did win their first game on day two, but day one, they only got 13 points. So it's possible they're warming up and the jump in points is a sign. They're probably more prepared the second run, but it's really hard to say when the two performances we've seen have been a little bit lacking. But let's talk about Oxygen Esports. Let's talk about Oxygen Esports because the best has to come for them because they have been lackluster by their own standards and they've made a change and it's not in the lineup. It's in the POI they're going to be dropping at. They were dropping over at Command Center. They have swapped. It's a house swap. It's a POI swap with the team who are at their old home of Barometer. So Oxygen Esports will be back to Barometer. They know those rotates so, so well on Storm Point and I think it's going to be a big contributing factor to them having a little bit more success than what we've seen from them so far and then optic gaming they have found more success on storm point even with down beast maybe not finding as many ring consoles as they would have liked as uh, onset was mentioning earlier but i kind of was expecting more from optic i think they're such an insane team uh, insane fighting team as well especially with the likes of skill cakes who will i always say is one of the scariest players to go up against I want to see more from Optic. I know what they're capable of. We saw what they did uh, at LAN. We saw what they did at the World Championships. And I think they just need to try and find that form again. But it's just finding their footing in this meta, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Apex is an ever-changing game. So it's always good to stay on top of knowing exactly what your team needs to keep up with the changing environment. So with that, I'm going to let y'all take over the cast for match number one. I am so excited to see these teams go up against each other. Thank you very much, Stella. I'm destroying stuff on my desk as we go into game number one because I've got the jitters, Dan, because I'm a little bit nervous. I'm a little bit excited. You know how it is. But game one is just around the corner, everyone. And coming into today, I think a lot of expectation and eyes, understandably, from the community is going to be on that top three, right? You've got LG, you've got TSM, you've got Dark Zero all in this lobby, and it is extremely tight at the top. And I think it's a, an opportunity for one of those teams to step forward and say, hey, we are the front runners today. We are have an opportunity here to really establish ourselves as that number one. Yeah, it's Hal, Sweet, and Zero again, but at the same time, you've got to be looking at who's alongside them and who's actually doing some of that dirty work. Even though we can always praise the IGLs, it is a massive team game, and it is going to be a massive contribution from anyone else who's going to be a part of it, whether it's the damage they're dealing, whether it's the positioning for support, whether it's just playing a legend that can actually give you a little bit of something in the early game or the late game. So many different strategies that are starting to be employed by teams now, and uh, I am wondering, going into now the fourth match day, are we going to see a future changes here in North America. EMEA certainly provided with a couple of changes here or there, and I think North America are usually, usually the the more safe of the two regions, I would say, and we'll have to see whether they carry on. I'm expecting a lot of Horizons, for example, on Storm Point. I think we might see a little bit more Watson today now that there's been a little bit of an adjustment to that interception pylon, of course, with it not healing uh, through walls. And, you know, the enemy team who are on the outside of your building aren't going to be sitting there going, hey, this is a like a warm campfire to sit around. This is uh, recharging our shields and giving us a little bit of extra. So we might see a little bit more Watson as we head towards our map schedule. This is how things are going to work today, starting off with three games on Storm Point before we head over to World's Edge. 
And you were talking about drops, you were talking about people moving, and I was just kind of working out where are the contests going to be? Are we going to actually see any going down? I'm looking across Storm Point, and we might be okay. I mean, there's a couple of teams that could contest one another, but I think it looks pretty clear from what I've seen, but we'll have to see when we get into it. I mean, there was one that happened at the wall, as you can see from the graphic in front of you. Whether that happens again will be the biggest question for me, because there is potentially a chance where you could split off and try and find somewhere else. But I'm pretty proud of A and B for finding <laughs> everyone finding a home and not having too many contests going down. In before Dark Zero drop Lightning Rod. Anyway, let's see if that happens and see if uh, we see some carnage going down, but everybody finding a little bit of a, a home, so to speak. And just a note as well, like I said, Oxygen Esports moving back to Barometer, and if there's some Barometer zones, I'm sure they'll feel extremely happy with that. But I think Ice Wars the Wall, like you say at the start of this game, and also I think just to note on complexity, I feel a bit like terrible in some ways that Kimchi has unfortunately had the internet issue, and he's hopefully going to be back a little bit later on. But what a pickup. Reptar coming in as their substitute player. That's where you make sure you've got a sub with some real pedigree. Oh, we do have substitutes with absolute firepower and history in Apex Legends, and Reptar certainly is one of them, and I'm very excited to see him alongside Monsoon once again. But there's going to be extra pressure, that's for sure. Right, Storm Point. So I'm expecting to see plenty of Horizons. Um, we know how influential Conduit has been as well, whether even if you're not having a contest in these in these mid game fights early game fights late game fights doesn't matter conduit is the one she is her and she certainly is going to help you in various different scenarios and of course being a support legend too can get those banners a little bit later and craft them but we're out of the dropship we're into match number one here in north america and we'll have to see whether we do get any contests potentially over at the wall well, it's going to be a very, very fun day. And I think a, a little bit of a defining day for some of the teams and the players. And we are going to see, by the looks of things, a contest going down here. Right on the southern side of the map. Blue Shield versus a White Shield. Mozambique versus a player in front of them. And this is looking like Albert is already under pressure. And interesting to see, he's playing a little bit of Revenant. But we're not going to get to see too much of it. It's he's going to fall. Yeah, this is what I was mentioning earlier. Teams starting to play more aggressive comps as they start to fall a little bit hard behind, perhaps, in the overall leaderboards. But this is down at Sonote Cave. And Skur are down to just two. Make it one because Skurry just managed to join. And unfortunately, Skur go down. Our first squad is eliminated. But there is action happening elsewhere. It is at the wall. And FaZe do have the advantage. Yeah, FaZe look like they're going to win this one as well. Snipe down gets two of those knocks with the Peacekeeper. I think there's one more player they're trying to chase down. And Snipe down wants all three. Unfortunately. Fortunately for him, he's going to have to wait a few extra seconds to get it. But the last player alive is 1 HP. He's, uh, I was going to say, if he had a white shield, he's wearing underwear. But you get the idea. He hasn't even got that at this point. He's taken down and FaZe will win that contest. But look at LG. They were already on their rotate, potentially, it looks like. No, they're actually just taking their time. But let's have a look at where the circle's going, Dan. Talk us through it. Yeah, going down towards the kind of southeast, I mean, great for Devastated Coast Droppers, SSG, uh, Lovers, Jacked Boys, whatever you were calling them earlier, but Launchpad... You, that. <laughs> you said they were jacked, all right? <laughs> I didn't say any of that. <laughs> Launchpad is, uh, is going to be a good spot for them, and they'll be able to just reside there for quite some time, loot up comfortably. They have Ring Console as well down at Devastated Coast, so this is a, a fantastic kind of drop for them to work with. Uh, you did see a little bit of a look from Eternal when they considered maybe or could we start to get involved in the third party over at the wall i think that phase will have to be aware of that aware that eternal could join it i remember that happened in a and b last time around eternal started to get involved in that fight a little bit more as teams now are starting to beginning their rotation complexity are starting to make make their way down to southeast yeah, complexity having to leave with a reptile in his underwear in that white armor but it's a couple of blues to play with they obviously looking for an early spot here and should be able to take it that building is going to be a very good one if they can call it a home for the long game. Obviously, the uh, the wall in front of them is a, a new addition to Storm Point, of course, for this season and gives a little bit more access, I would say, to some of the teams in the surrounding area. And SSG, who, la or who land excuse me, over at Launchpad, have decided to make that their home. However, speaking of homes, there's some neighbors here for complexity to deal with, and there is already a team inside of this building. Yeah, this is where you have to be careful because this is the period of the game where everyone is trying to claim that prime real estate. So Complexity may have found a building that they want, they think is good. This could help them in the end game, but there are other teams thinking exactly the same thing. And right now it is just survive, survive, survive. Use those resources to make sure you get healthy and then prepare to fight because you are under siege. Things are looking a little bit sketchy here. 
Meds are going to be burnt through. And just remember, the complexity left very, very quickly. So you would imagine on their rotate, they haven't had a time to do a huge amount of looting, which means that meds are probably going to be at a premium. But it's a first opportunity for Reptile to show what he's made of. And we're going to see him use that ultimate to really give them a bit of time here. Force the team away across for them and see if they can just take the time to pick off one target at a time. But for now, it's dropping gaming versus complexity. And it's just a little bit of two teams flexing their muscles, but nobody really being able to land a blow. Yeah, and they both can reside together. They don't have to take this fight, and I think that will probably be the realization that they come to here, that we're actually fine here. If the other team isn't going to be pressing us, then let's just let them be. We'll be here for the end game, and then we'll fight them later. And they can almost work together. The worry is... If another team tries to take this spot off you, suddenly that team becomes a threat. So these are all the things you have to start thinking about. Is it more of a threat now? Is it more of a risk now to take this fight? Or is it going to kind of bite us in the backside a little bit later if we let them live too long? Well, looking across uh, who had a ring console to give them a bit of information at the start of this game. Lightning Rod had one. That was for TSM. There was one at Zeus Station as well. So LG are going to have a good zone read. Launchpad, of course, had one as well. So that's why SSG have taken up what they believe is a priority position. Looking elsewhere, you've got the mill. So Dark Zero will have information. Checkpoint as well and down B. So a pretty good spawn rate, actually, of ring consoles and some of the major POIs for some of our major teams. They're all going to have a good indication of where this zone is going. So we'll be able to plan their, uh, their rotates appropriately. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a reason why Dark Zero are already this far across the map, right? They, they had the ring console, they got the information, and they moved quickly. Just checking in on TSM's journey, it looks like uh, they were having a little bit of a pop at a team down below them, but now they will continue with an evac tower to just try and get past, perhaps. Looks like they want to try and play these rocks, which is a pretty good spot. The only problem is you have to be very careful of a team moving through that spider choke on either side of you or mirroring you from what we saw. But you can already see from the position of Verholz that it's a pretty good spot to deny line of sight, especially from some of that high ground that we saw the likes of SSG playing. You can see GG up on the crane as well. And it allows you to play for the long game. And it is also a place that a lot of the times we see this end circle pull towards. So as long as they can watch their backs here, a couple of cues from Verholz is going to give them the info if someone does try and sneak up. But this is a good rotate from TSM. I think they're going to be pretty happy. Yeah, and they are one of the few teams that are very good at holding positions like that as well. They are so good at turning around on fights, at prioritizing together, but elsewhere, Native Gaming going to get into a scuffle, and it's great damage from Claim, which just allow him to escape. Should be able to get a bat off here. I mean, shots came in through the smoke, and he just blind fired through the smoke and hit almost every single one of them. So good damage coming in from Claim, and it looks like they will be able to get the better of this team for now. It looks like they'll be doing a little bit of loot and just picking up a few bits off this body before they do continue forward, but... I mean, Native at the moment inside of Jurassic. They've got GKS in front of them as well. A couple of remaining players. They have to be careful here because this is a tough fight against GKS. Yeah, it is. And they're actually, actually going to try and make a move down through the, the low ground here, which is risky. But at the same time, it could pay off here if you are able to get past all of the commotion. And I, I like going low because going low, you can avoid a lot of the sight lines that are happening above you. And as long as you're all working together, as long as you have a plan of action of where you want to end up, then you should be fine. And it looks like they are going to be rewarded with it. And they have a building to work with. They have some safe space, some safe haven. And they weren't griefed too much as they tried to make that rotation. Here's the overhead. Here's the map. Uh, as we can see, only a few teams not within that circle. FaZe, Eternal, Cream, Native. They are the late movers. But everyone else is pretty much hunkered down, found somewhere to live. But we're going far southeast here. So Complexity, Dark Zero, SSG, all in fantastic spots. The same for Oblivion, and then we already checked in with TSM. They're holding that northern side, and they do have the mountain to their back, so they can certainly work with this as long as they can hold that choke. Yeah, TSM in a really good spot. Just have to, like you mentioned, watch out for any late rotates coming in from the north. You've got Eternal, who might think about moving that way. You've got FaZe as well. But again, if you're one of those teams rotating from the north through one of those choke points, you know it's going to be a risky move to make. So TSM in a great spot. Dark Zero also watching the south side of this zone. They're going be careful because oxygen esports are coming around that corner right now and they're a team with a lot to prove this week yeah there's a, i mean there's a few teams that really have to prove themselves and maybe it's getting to that point where we've we've seen enough to realize that that they can compete but are they going to be good enough to either a get to LAN or b are we going to start talking about teams that could even maybe win a LAN? i know we only really talk about our previous winners but surely it can't go on we only have two LAN winners right surely someone else is going to break through and change the narrative here of dark zero and tsm 
Well, Cream have been eliminated, so that's our uh, third team to fall out of the lobby at the moment. 17 squads remaining as we uh, see Eternal making a little bit of a rotate on that Trident themselves. And we mentioned how they might try and move on a Northern Rotate. Well, that's exactly what they are doing at the moment. And TSM are going to have to be very aware of them moving in behind them. Elsewhere, you can see DNO playing on the cannon at the moment. SSG have moved a little bit more so south from the top of that wall that we saw them on a minute ago. And OXG just creeping up. You can see they've taken the height over them at the moment and this is going to be a little bit of a poke battle between the two teams yeah definitely a poke battle right now whether it will actually end in anything will remain to be seen there's a few teams who are in good spots that will be fine if only one team pushes them but my worry for teams like dno and for tsm as well who are on that northern side if two teams approach at the same time suddenly your lack of cover is really going to hurt you so you have to have a kind of plan b to either get out or to at least find a new position or just push a team and get aggressive so there's certainly got to be those considerations as we go back to drop-in gaming they're still residing in the same building and both teams are still more than happy to do so i was gonna say shout out to drop-in gaming and complexity by the way this is the kind of you move into a residential building these are the kind of neighbors you want right you know just occasionally wave at each other through the window let each other get on with each other's business oh, they, they turned up with a casserole at the front door they were more oh, than happy to welcome them in the neighborhood delicious i'm the kind of neighbor that knocks on your door on the first day and goes hey have you got any sugar and if you say yes i go do you have any butter? And then I <laughs> just keep milk. going. Yeah. Can I have your Wi-Fi code? Oh, they got, yeah. I'm the one who complains if your Wi-Fi password changes after I've cracked <laughs> it after a year. Anyway, FaZe, they're making their rotate from the north. And this is a team who are facing up against Eternal potentially here, having won the contest. And I think for a team like FaZe, after a pretty shaky game day number two, winning that contest first game down with players like this fills you with confidence. And Snipe Down is a confidence player. Oh, yeah, I think that if you can get sniped down and the rest of the squad going, they are going to be a real threat in this lobby and a real threat in the positioning wise to all of these teams that are on the northern side. Anyway, Eternal are fighting them. Let's jump into a listen and see what the comms are like. I'm dropping a scan. You look at them. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I've got, 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 Biggest week! I'm batting, I'm batting, I'm batting! I'm batting, I'm batting! I'm batting. Give me knock, give me knock. I need him 90, I need him 90! Okay. Play around the res, get healthy, play around the res, okay? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Pop us out, come back a little bit, Carter, come back a little bit. I can dump a scan. Scan, how long? Scanning. Yeah, 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 pop it, pop it! I'm resing, I'm resing, I'm resing. Bait the res, bait the res, yeah. I got you back. I'm marking the corner. Wait, swing, like bottom floor building, bottom floor building! Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. Let's go. I'm coming out the roof. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. die. Again. I'm gonna die. Again. I'm dying on the door. Dying on the door. Okay. Is that yours? Is that your door? All this shit is his. Oh, make sure you guys heal. Make sure you guys heal. I'm playing on my door. Here's a little med. Heal your flesh. Heal your flesh. Heal your flesh. Go on a med. Get. I've scan. I've scan after my med. Okay. Okay. You just have to swing. He's getting shot. He's getting shot at. Yeah, yeah. I think he's slowed down. I think he's slowed down. Get the fins. Get the fins. Get the fins. Come on, come on. I'm being scanned. I'm, I'm rising. I'm rising. I'm rising. Okay. I'm rising. Get healthy, Carter. I need to clear our back. Is, is that building still free, boys? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Hold on, let me. No, they're there. They're there. People are there. Okay. Carter, Carter, can you that guy? Yeah, very strong indeed. And. I mean, there was the communication was a little bit scuffed. I will say there was a lot of uh, screaming that went down that I'm sure they know how to deal with at this point, but. They were able to get those initial knocks and then they played it safe and they will, they will be rewarded and they should be able to get back up to a full three. Speaking of getting back up to a full three, Dark Zero have made their way into one of the buildings that we were looking at earlier when we were talking about friendly neighbors, Mark. Well, one of those friendly neighbors was just wiped out by Dark Zero by the looks. Yeah, dropping gaming to get a fall and that means that Dark Zero, they're going to be the only part of this building, I believe, that is going to be safe when the zone closes next. So. Dark Zero make their play, they take their fight, and most importantly, they win it. And now it looks like they're going to try and move a little bit towards the edge of zone and see if they can find some KP. Complexity in the meantime, look at that. They've managed to level those armors up, and they are looking a lot more healthy than they were a few moments ago. It's just the very corners of that building that will be safe, though. That's why Dark Zero have decided this isn't the place we want to play for the long term, but Complexity finally get a little bit of breathing room. Dark Zero walk into the neighborhood, evict a team, and then they just leave. Like, this, that, that was brutal. Oh, landlords. Classic yeah. landlord behavior. Classic sums them up. Oxygen have just made their way to center circle, by the way. SSG find themselves on the southern side, and Native have to push from the far west here. 
And they're going to be greeted by two or three teams that are trying to do the same thing. Ape Gang are in the building ahead of them. Elevate also just on the other side. So Native have got to be careful. Might have to use some ultibuts here just to try and stay alive. Yeah, you can see the EA are trying to kind of feather their way up that hill as well using the Dark Veil. Phase eliminated in the meantime. The last player is taken down. Zera Tricky. And speaking of Zera Tricky, well, there's some tricky moves coming in as the Native Gaming try and make their rotation now. The zone is going to be closing. They do have an evac tower down, but I think it might just be bait. They're going to try and play play around this cat wall but that zone is a problem for them but they find a corner to play but a corner that doesn't look too comfortable right now yeah gks are on the other side elevate also there and even optica having a sniff at this native doing very well to stay as healthy as they can right now you just need to try and delay have some patience hope another team will save you and it's kind of happening elevate are getting involved and it does allow native to somewhat reset here but they're still in a tough spot oh the black hole is gonna go in and that might just spark everything off Couple of nades to follow it up. There's the damage, big, big damage. Zap is doing some good work here for both teams and mostly good work here for E8. Great shots coming in from the wingman, but nothing really that they can push off because they know there's still two teams here. Yeah, they know GKS are just on the other side and they want to desperately get these finishes just to get the extra KP on board. But I like how they are playing it patient. They are being careful. Now with the smokers coverage, they do start to step up. But that's the danger. You step up and you will get absolutely buzzed from the other side. And now Elevate are still just trying to force themselves and native somehow still alive and here come optic optic here all of this going down they wait for the knocks in the kill feed and they say now is our time to strike which might actually benefit e8 to be able to get a res i'm not sure if zach Mazer was actually finished off there or if he's going to be able to be res but native somehow and i'm not quite sure how elevate gaming eliminated completely by the way have survived all of this this is unbelievable as now they full send do as much damage as you can with the smgs rambo is the first to fall though but it is a trade one for one Dropped has gone down as well. Now it's a one versus two. One versus two. Clayton trying to save the day here for Native Gaming. Won't be able to do so. Optic Gaming will win the fight, but it's Dark Zero from distance with the 30 day repeater who are knocking one of those players down. The knockdown shield will be taken down as well. And Optic will lose at least one. And it looks like Skittlecakes realizes with the zone closing, there's no time for him to get his teammates back in the game. Yeah, not only Dark Zero, but also the remainder of GKS. We're just griefing the final remaining players there from Optic 2. And GKS will be able to escape as a duo. But it's complexity in Dark Zero are kind of holding the high and low ground of the primary position on the southwest side who are going to be a real threat. Dark Zero on the height and complexity just below them. But this is a good spot because you can walk along this bridge into where that zone is going to be pulling. You can also farm everyone else who has to move across this open ground. Optic Gaming yeah. being one of those teams to be farmed. And it's LG who are still involved in this game as well. You can see Funk in the kill feed. And here's the fight between Gaming Gladiators and TSM. How is going to try and swing this and not going to be able to get the damage that he would have wanted. But the zone is forcing these fights. One minute and four seconds left until these teams have to move forward. Yeah, TSM just want to take isolated fights. They're trying to avoid the two teams that are above them on the northern side. And they've got the rock as coverage right now. So they're in a good spot but they do have to move in about 50 seconds, excuse me, but they're moving right into DNO gaming. This is a big fight for TSM. Reps is gonna take a bit of damage here. The smoke goes down just to give him a few seconds maybe to recover. Verholz has got to hold the ground here for TSM as Oblivion will be eliminated in the meantime. Two cells get popped, so they have an opportunity to maybe step up a little bit more, and it's DNO who are on the other side of this fight, holding this head glitch, holding this high ground, and TSM are having to force this, but it looks like Cross wants to make the play. Yeah, TSM are struggling to get that initial damage to allow them to push up hill and now with reps going down it might be a bitter end for TSM as here comes the push they try and go out with a bang but TSM eliminated in ninth position eight squads now remain SSG hold one of the primary positions Dark Zero still doing a lot of damage from this southern side as well if you want an example of how to play Bangalore, watch some zero gameplay. The man is a master of not just the abilities, but using that double time to just get in and out of situations, to take attention away, to scout, whatever it might be. He really does know how to utilize every single bit of Bangalore's kit. And look at LG. Sweet. Still alive. Just, I will say, one HP and a dream. He's uh, squeezing everything together to try and stay alive at this point. But at least he's got a little bit of extra shield from the conduit before he has to back out. Can Sweet get any sort of extra placement here, or is he going to be hunted down? If you can get a few more places, and actually, this doesn't seem like a bad position. Sometimes hiding in plain sight does work. Just have a little bit of cover. Now, Oxygen, Complexity, and Dark Zero are all within the same kind of vicinity at the moment, but they're all on very different elevated angles, and it is 
certainly more difficult if you're on the low ground, but there is Dark Veil to protect them as they try and make their move across. Have to make the move now, Complexity. Have to make their move up these stairs. They're not going to be safe in this corner, and they're being shredded from above. And hey, surprise, surprise, it's Dark Zero who are moving in now to finish off these kills. GKS will be eliminated. Complexity fall as well as Dark Zero take control. Zero has gone down, though, but it'll be brought back to his feet almost immediately. Well, we get to the final circle and we have five squads that remain, but remember, one of them is a rat. So it's essentially four uh, with a little bit of a sprinkle of sweet. And what can sweet do to try and influence this final circle? SSG have held this position for quite some time. And actually, one member of SSG is looking down towards Dark Zero. So they know Dark Zero are there. Oxygen are just slightly north of where Dark Zero currently hold. And then you have Flat who hold the entirety of the northern side right now. Well, it's SSG or as Dan Gaskin coined them, the jacked lads who are in a great position <laughs> to maybe win this game. And what a start that would be to SSG re-entering into the Apex Legends Global Series. But GG are going to have something to say about that. But it's interesting that we've got Dark Zero, our number one team. And then everyone else in the lobby at the moment, you're kind of looking at, and I'm excluding Sweet as the solo, as maybe teams who have something to prove in this lobby today. SSG are going to force the Dark Veil, and now they will back up after Dark Zero tried to make a play. Nano did get the knock onto Jen, though, and now they're hoping that someone else will try and make a play off of this. Remember, SSG coming off for the back of a victory on match day three they are hot right now and they really want to be able to continue that momentum and this squad is looking more and more scary the more we see of them and look how they're playing this one at the moment they back off when they take a little bit of damage they reset and then they start to take more space once more oxygen are stuck between a rock and a hard place at the moment they're certainly going to be griefed by flat and or gg sorry while sweet is still alive as a solo rat right now no he's not he's down now we have four squads remaining it's a 3v3v3 well, I see that Zero and Sykes are alive. And if you've been uh, watching the, the internet recently, then you would have seen that there was some good communication between these two that was turned into a metal song. But this time, it's Zero is going to have to show his metal, but won't be able to. Dark Zero eliminated. We're down to three. It's now Flat moving. Well, Flat moving onto SSG. As soon as they saw that damage was happening, they tried to press. They tried to get into a position where they could maybe take an angle. But now everyone kinds of resets here. So now it will be a 3v3v3. And everyone gets a little bit of a lull here whilst the Dark Veil is up to consider to how they want to try and approach this. This is where ultimates are going to be huge. Who still has a Dark Veil? Maybe no one at this point, because I can see several on the map. Well, Flat have the zone. They have the advantage here. And they might be able to climb up and win this game, number one. There's Nox on either side as well. Frex has gone down. Oxygen doing damage. It's about cleaning things up here for Flat. Not allowing these shield swaps. They're going to get into position to rain down fire and close this game out. And Flat will be your game one winners. Wow, Flat. Soon to be the gaming gladiators. And I tell you what, they said, see you in the Coliseum. It seems like they were more than ready for match day four here in North America. They turn it into a victory. And as you say, they just were able to just gain a little bit more ground each time as they pushed up. And then to gain the height was everything, especially with the Dark Veils being down. They were able to look and peek over and grief those teams. So great positioning from them in the final circle. Yeah, great knowledge of uh, where they were in the zone in comparison to everyone else as well. Didn't have to force anything. Knew that SSG were going to have to fight in that position and just waited to pick the pieces up. It was a simple end game for them to uh, to take care of. And there's always a fight you have to take before that that kind of rolls you into that good position. So shout out to Flat. They're going to be the winners of game number one. But some of our big teams were, like I mentioned, still involved in that game, Dan, right until the very end. Yeah, Dark Zero inside of that top five. LG, I think Sweet managed to rat his way to the to the top five, if I'm not mistaken, at least. And uh, obviously you had SSG new back to Apex Legends and PLP, formerly obviously known as, continuing some form we saw previous. Yeah, everyone looked very impressive. Mark, I'll let you go and bring Stella back into the fray here to see her thoughts and discuss things. I mean, Stella, uh, uh, an interesting yeah. match one. I mean, five squads remaining in the final circle. One of them was a rat, but it was certainly an entertaining final circle. It was incredible. I was surprised that sweet did not get noticed for as long as he did especially being so close to flat but i also want to shout out flat for doing such a good job of taking up so much space in that outer courtyard and then all they had to do was wait for oxygen and ssg to finish their fight and flat won with very very uh a lot of ease and it was just incredibly smart of them to spread out and make themselves feel like they were more of a force to to fight against so of course the other teams were going to face each other um yes and sweet did get eliminated at fifth spot but that placement is pretty good and tsm was out at ninth place which i was a little bit surprised about but again storm point rotations it's really easy to get caught out of circle and that's kind of what happened to a lot of people 
Yeah, TSM were just fighting up uphill, couldn't really get the damage onto DNO. DNO died instantly after killing TSM as well. It was just one of those where it was never really going to work out for either squad because there was going to be another team waiting in the distance. Just a zone pull that pulled away from both of the teams, and sometimes that's all you can work with. But ninth isn't the end of the world, and eighth isn't the end of the world for DNO as well. You have to try and gain as many points as possible, even in the unfavorable zones, and that's what will make you have consistent points, and that's how you will find yourself just climbing the leaderboards and getting closer to playoffs. Speaking of, I think we can look at the match results and we can just see how everything's looking, Stella. Yeah, absolutely. And Flat coming in first, of course, with 21 total points, nine kills, which is pretty impressive. That is a lot higher than even Oxygen Esports and Dark Zero, who we saw absolutely fragging out. Now, Dark Zero is only two kills behind, but of course, with Flat getting the placement points, they do jump up in score. Yeah, very uh, impressive, 21 points. But down in the bottom, we saw Skirt unfortunately went down in the early stages because of that contest that went down. Uh, it didn't really work out for the opposing team too much either. FaZe, even though they won their contest, weren't really able to move quick enough. Again, that is sometimes the detriment of being in a contest that even if you win it, you are so far behind in the rotation race that you are going to struggle to make your way. I mean, it was a difficult rotation anyway because it was a southern zone, but that's always going to be extra frustration for sure. Lots of gamings, Optic Gaming, Native Gaming, Elevate Gaming, Drop-In Gaming, <laughs> all the gamings, but they all find themselves in the bottom 10. Of course, yeah. And look at the damage from our top three placement teams. And it was pointed out that these are all the teams that we talked about today at the top of show. I, I listen, I ooh, I hope that doesn't count as caster's curse, but I Might think do. we're right on the money here. It's, oh no, don't say it. <laughs> That's how it happens. Well, all, all it takes is one mention of it and then suddenly the caster it curse, it happens. I, I've got to be impressed. You've got to be impressed by the damage, by the way, of Nano. 2.7K yes. damage coming out of Nano there. Uh, very impressive. And you need players like that on your squad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, damage is all about being able to crossfire with your teammates, and it doesn't even matter. It, at this point, it doesn't even matter if you get the kills. It matters if your team gets the kills, and that's exactly what they were able to do. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have match number two ready for you. All right, welcome back. Hi, Gaskin. How was your break? Did you uh, get some water? Uh, yeah, I had a minute to run <laughs> to the bathroom, got some water. I'm refueled. I'm hydrated. I'm ready to go for another game as always. Awesome. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about who you think is going to win today. Who do you think is going to come out on top? Dark Zero looked really strong, but also, I mean, that last circle was so chaotic. I have no idea if it's all RNG or if we're going to see better performances out of flat consistently today. 
Um, I, I don't think that will be a one-off. I think that Flat's certainly are performing well, but I'm still thinking SSG are going to be a team to watch today. I think a sign, being signed by a new org always helps you. And you can say the same for Flat, by the way, being signed by GG. It's always going to give you that extra little bit of a boost and also that extra bit of, all right, we need to prove ourselves. And I don't want to say people don't try when they're not performing on a new org, but it just makes you try that little bit harder, you know. So I want to keep an eye on both of the new signings, to be honest, because they're both going to make a big impact here. Yeah, of course. And we did see that there was a little bit of contest at the wall with FaZe and Temper today. And I think FaZe won out on that, which was great, but they also didn't really, they weren't really able to sustain that throughout the match because they did get 3kp, but their placement wasn't that great. Yeah, again, it's just one of those situations that you can win the contest, but you suddenly lose the rotate. You're going to be so far behind. It was a difficult rotate for them, though. FaZe will be hoping for a little bit of a more northern zone because... Sadly, when you do have to take a contest, you take so long, you need to have the time on your side, and that is going to be happening from the north. Yeah, and you're absolutely, absolutely right. Even on a big map like Stormpoint, it is really important to rotate as soon as you can because it's one of those things of you can, you can get one of those um, redeploy towers quite easily. But I'm going to leave the game to you and Onset to carry out match number two. Thank you very much, Stellar. I'm here, everyone. Don't panic. It's time for us to get into game number two. And FaZe are going to be taking on Temp Up once more. It's 1 0 to FaZe in this contest. Dan, where's your money? Where are you putting your money on this one? FaZe, all the pennies on FaZe, but Temper are starting to take the lead, and it's because of the RE45, the RE45 mark. It's absolute God's work in the early contest. I will say it, and I will say it again. It's my replacement to the alternator, and FaZe are on the back foot. And I'll tell you what, a lot of it's because of the RE45. I want to see a charge rifle shot hit right now for 100 plus. Oh, it's not 100 plus, but it's good enough. FaZe eliminated. We're tied up at 1-1, one, one, Dan. Fades are not going to get oh. to play in the Apex in this one. Let's see what happens. I mean, this that contest is done, by the way, or the flight path, how close it was to the northern side of Stormpoint that we haven't even had Skirt land yet for the second contest. Yeah, this is why I like the dropship being uh, this way, because it means that we get to see two contests happening <laughs> on our screens. But it looks like maybe Skirt don't take the fight initially. They're going to look to try and get a little bit more loot to work with. Uh, we do have two Revenants in the lobby, by the way. One of them being Albrelli. Of course, ever since the Revenant rework, a very valuable legend to use in certain scenarios, certainly uh, for players who like to be aggressive. I mean, the extra shields that you gain during his ultimate is always going to be good for those players who like to get in and then get out. You can take that damage and do an extra bit, a little bit like what Conduit does, but arguably uh, more selfishly. <laughs> yeah, that's why I play Revenant. Anyway, CO <laughs> Station is going to be our focus of attention. Usually we see these zones pull just to the, uh, the west side of Seto. We'll have to see if that is going to be the case. But now we're going to see the contest uh. continue. Arbolelli does get a shield swap, though. He gets that blue. And he's going to be able to escape for now. Teammates are moving in now to try and back him up a little bit. But no real kind of damage that's going to be capitalized on as far as Nox is concerned at this point. The height is going to be taken, though, and the height is always an advantage. Scurry, though, look at him. He hasn't got any meds to play with. But this early contest hasn't been able to pick anything up himself to give himself an opportunity to re-heal, but the Conduit is going to help him out in that situation. But Alvarelli is going to go down first once again. So that's two contests in a row where Alvarelli has unfortunately gone down first, and now Skirt will fall just afterwards. It's the cream that rises to the top once more, Dan. Whoa. And it's going to be Skirt who fall. Hey, how Whoa. about that one, everyone? It's only game two. Are what a commentator. Oh. Just love it. Absolutely love it. I was thinking the same thing, but you know, you just do it better, bigger and better. Yeah, unfortunate for Skirt. They, I mean, it's I great. First. <laughs> it's great having a Revenant, right? But if you don't get that ultimate going, then you lose a lot of the kind of benefits of running a Revenant compared to having the Conduit. I mean, I know they have the Conduit as well, but... Yeah, it's, uh, it's a shame for Skirt. I think, again, it's down to weaponry. Sometimes that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to contests. If you get good weapons, get bad weapons. In Amiya, we saw someone drop on three P2020s in a row. So that can happen. The game can go against you at times, and that's the risk that you run with contests happening. Dan. Yes. Give me a beacon check, my friend. Ring console check. Who's going to have information on where this zone is going to be going and who's going to be able to plan their rotate efficiently? 
We had one at mill, so Dark Zero were able to move plenty early, or plenty quickly, should I say. Uh, there was one down over towards Echo and Coastal Camp as well, so the southern teams are all pretty good. And this is why Dark Zero are already in this building, and they're dealing some impressive damage as well, as they made, made their move very quickly from mill over towards this side. It's going to be Oxygen who are on the other side of this, and one thing I love about Dark Zero, when they get the first knock, not afraid to try and immediately finish the fight. They want to death ball, they want to find those far, uh, second and third players to make sure that they aren't going to be a threat a little bit later on they're not going to be able to but they are forcing oxygen away so you would say a win for sure for dark zero they take control of the building now and they're going to be chilling here for quite some time uh, elsewhere tsm did have a ring console as well but they're still looting in their poi uh, they're not going to be moving very quickly when they saw where the zone was pulling they decided they are going to be playing late on this one uh checkpoint also had a ring console uh, i don't think there was one over towards down beast for optic to work with they did have a survey beacon but no ring console again and that, that was a concern that you had brought up at the start of the show for optic and perhaps one of the reasons why they haven't been able to find as much success is because down beast certainly hasn't seen as much ring consoles as it used to well, SSG do have one over at Launchpad once again, but I think much like TSM, their plan is, hey, we're not going to get there first. We're not going to have a prior position. Let's take our time. Let's uh, move we around go. the map a little bit. Let's craft our way up. Let's make sure that we've got shields that we want. Let's make sure that we've got a few hemlocks maybe as well, because let me tell you, those things are being crafted more and more as we work through the weeks. And TSM now with the Trident are going to start making their way a little bit closer to zone. They've got nobody else by the way within half a map of them at the moment so it's gonna be a very comfortable rotate for them and i'm pretty sure they're gonna go and craft here at stormcatcher as well if i'm not mistaken if yeah this is why and then they get those arms up this is why tsm's drop spot is a very powerful one here on storm point because you not only have the ability to loot in a very loot heavy poi but you can rotate through loot heavy pois and also pois that have ring consoles and crafters and survey beacons it is a great path to be moving through as eternal speaking of paths can they craft a path to try and push through here it looks like they're going to back off ever so slightly but this is a fight that's happening towards mill and this is going to be outside of the zone shortly so it's a fight that probably has to finish sooner rather than later this might be two teams who are trying to contest for that third beacon. As we can see, Eternal have the first beacon, or ring console, I should say. So they're going to have information on where the zone is going, but they might be thinking about trying to play for the third, as are the team who are going to be contesting them here as well. It looks like it might be a little bit of damage going down on the favor of Eternal, but as I say, that the first knock actually goes to E8. So E8 are in the building right now and they got that first knock and it's Zach Mazer who maybe makes up for an overextension in the last game by picking up the first knock in this fight. This is, this is such a difficult fight to try and hold as a two because there are four different angles that you have to try and think about. The catalyst will negate potentially two of those so that can certainly swing things back in your favor but if I was the opposition team here I'd just be working on high ground and force the players out here, force them to go with the circle and play this one nice and patiently. Zoni's going to be coming in, though, and that's the problem because nobody really wants to be slowed down this much. Once again, you're seeing E8 with an early wingman, by the way, and we are seeing a few care package weapons dropping very early to teams. And oh my god, that is a uh, pretty much a great illustration if you wanted to maybe indicate how what the wingman does in its current state. What can you do against that? Right? They're, they're in a two versus three. They're trying to hunker down. They've barricaded off two of the entry points and then you walk in you just get three tapped by the wingman it's so it is so crucial if you have a legend that can give you the ability to see what's in those care packages if you see a wingman you better be getting it you even if you have to work hard to get there make sure you retrieve that but with the the changes to the care packages and the fact that we are seeing the red weapons now in the early stages it can make such a huge difference with the wingman coming into people's hands we had a little joke and a little bit of fun earlier about how uh, it's obviously the fifth birthday of Apex Legends. Happy birthday, Apex Legends fans. And how we're seeing a little bit of throwback with some of the uh, compositions we saw in Amir. We saw Caustic and Wraith winning a game today. It was a, a lovely little throwback. And now I'm seeing a charge rifle. So, you know, it's maybe, maybe not season one, maybe a little bit later on. But for something we haven't seen pretty much all season, it's good to see maybe the throwback and the uh, the classics coming out now in, uh, in Storm Point in North America. Hey, you don't only celebrate the first season and anniversary, we celebrate all the different metas and all the different seasons, and the Charge Rifle certainly played a huge part in Apex Legends for arguably too long, too but long. it still was a very powerful weapon. Now, not so much, but still has its uses in the right hands, and I'd usually say it's probably when loot hasn't really been great for you, but I mean, I don't know, some people might just still like the thing. 
I will say, by the way, this is another what I would describe as a unpredictable. And I mean that in the way of people won't see it coming, but also I don't think you can see it coming. Zone pull. The zone because pool, we yeah. are going away from where we find a lot of our teams at the moment in the center of the map. South. Outside of Jurassic, it's going to finish up on the hills, which is a very, very rare end zone, I would say, traditionally, that we've seen on Stormpoint. You can always tell when it's an unpredictable zone pool based on how many teams were blindsided by it. And I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, potentially nine teams that all position themselves elsewhere as Dark Zero. Finally, we'll be able to take down the first player onto DNO, and they will be able to hold this building accordingly because of that. Uh, they are another team who are probably going to have to move shortly when they see where the zone is going to be pulling as well. But at least they are going to be in a position where they could rotate south here. They don't have to go through all the commotion on that northern side. Interesting to see what the players here from DNO. They do, of course, have conduit, so they can go and craft if they needed to. And I think that Crust has decided it's a solo mission to get the trident. Maybe think about going out towards Mill and crafting that banner to get Duplex back in the game. He did get dropped a couple of meds on his way, so maybe that's going to be the play. Or maybe it's going to be into Cenote, which is uh, another option, of course, because there is crafting available there. So a lonely mission, but one that will come back with a friend, at least. So TSM Dark Veil goes down as they approach the previous match winners flat. And it looks like they did enough just to scare them away. It's not going to be a straight fight that's going to go down. As everything's getting pretty congested on the northern side, so this is a good fight to be taking. And actually, one of the ideal spots for TSM, and I think Flat will be pretty happy with their spot as well. Because TSM have that ring console information, so they, they weren't blindsided by this pull. And that's one of the benefits of them playing late. Remember, TSM had one of the furthest rotates to be making here, but because they played it slow, because they went through an area where they could hit that ring console for the zone 3 pull, they can now reap the benefits of it. Yeah, and sometimes you're always thinking like, wow, we didn't get prior to this zone. Like, how are we going to approach it? This is the benefit of planning a rotate and pathing yourself in a way where you can collect information that becomes of greater value towards the end game. That third beacon, that third ring console, I'll call it a beacon forever, by the way, everybody, is going to be, like you say, completely and utterly invaluable for them being in one of the best positions now. Everybody else who had banked on it going a little bit more north, like Ape Gang, you can see here, dropping gaming, Oblivion, Temper, GKS, LG, Everyone will have to leave. And that's just guaranteed placement points for a team like TSM. Oh, and then it moves even further north as well. This is uh, not a fun circle for really anyone, except maybe Complexity, Complexity will be pretty happy when they... They, they think it's quite fun. Yeah, <laughs> Complexity will just be like kind of whistling to themselves for the next 20 minutes. As long as no one jumps on them, uh, they have a real opportunity to not just get into the late game here, but I mean, I'll, I won't call it just yet, but there's always the chance of winning from these positions. But certainly that's, that zone could still pull away from them as we get into final, final circle. So we'll have to see. I won't get ahead of myself. As Dark Zero are making their move, they are being certainly spotted out and the ultimates have gone down just to try and give them that little bit of cover. And it looks like they've successfully rotated through. But this is what I was saying. They can go south here. They don't have to go through the northern side. But there will be teams on the south as well. Even though there's more teams on the northern side, there are a couple that Dark Zero would still have to go through here on the south. They're also going to have to deal with Duplex, who is going to be looking for revenge right Sorry, now. Sorry, it's back in the game. The solo Duplex. mission was, <laughs> was successful. Seal Team Crust managed to get him back into the game. And now Dark Zero are going to have to deal with them. A couple of shots going down. The smokes are going to allow Zero just to retreat for a few seconds. But you can see now the difficulty for Dark Zero, right? They are trapped. Sykes is taking damage as well. He's going to have to pop the Q here on the Conduit to get a few shields back as he tries to rotate back in to the building to make this fight elongate a little bit longer so they can get healthy. And they just about managed to do so. But this zone pull has, uh, I would say, caused a lot of teams to feel flustered. I don't think Dark Zero have an evac tower either. I was going to say, if they are really in a bad situation, you can start to think about evac tower. And maybe it doesn't matter if suddenly the Nemesis can do that amount of damage. It could allow them to push through, but they need to decide here, north or south. Never mind about the evac tower, right? You can just push either way now by using it. And it looks like they're going to go back north. Okay, they were forced north here by DNO. 
Yeah, Duplex went down again and Krusty's saying, I'm not getting you back in again. I did it once. I'm not doing it twice. So they leave. They cannot afford to do so right now. LG taking the low ground on the waterfall. Their plan right now is to not show any presence, but if a team lands around them, they've just got to try and hold this space. LG in a pretty good spot for now. They're safe. A gang just flew past them as well. Complex is still inside of that building. Elsewhere, though, TSM now have to make their move. They have to move from Jurassic through a very token. A uh, tight choke point, excuse me, that's being held by Flat. So SSG inside this building, they're a long way away from Circle, but the big fight here is going to be between TSM and Flat. Every time you say that, I just think, when I make my move. Anyway, <laughs> Native, Dark Zero. Dark Zero down to just one. It is going to be zero against the world at the moment. But it looks like it's going to come to a very quick conclusion as Dark Zero get eliminated in 17th position. Native, again, backs against the wall. Very good at fighting today as they put themselves on eight points and up into eighth position. Well, I mentioned the big fight, and it's been won by TSM. They take down flat. They will take control of the fence line over at Jurassic, and they will be safe for the next zone. That was such an important fight for them to win. Elsewhere, this is everybody who's trying to leave Seto Station at the moment. Everybody who kind of bet on this being where the end zone will be taking place now has to leave. Temper, one of those squads who's really struggled to find anything good to talk about so far this season. They're finding themselves with one down and cloaked. He's going to have to be rest. Are they going to be able to get the res? It looks like they should be. Meanwhile, Oxygen versus LG is going down. It looks like it's a two versus two. Maybe can start to be evened out a little bit because Sweet's just fallen and LG will be wiped. So Oxygen showing why they are a dangerous 3v3 fighting team. We've always said that ever since the days of the arena tournaments when we saw some of these guys being able to do their biggest and best impressions of playing on a certain map. Now, SSG, though, are going to be able to see this from a distance and... Will the smoke protect them? I don't think it's going to be able to do so. Dark Veil will go down on the other side, and Oxygen are just stuck in a rock between a hard place. Yeah, it's a really rough spot. At least they've got some smoke, so maybe that can buy them enough time. But SSG are going to be moving up on them. Can they get that res back? Is there an opportunity to drop a shield here for the res player? Or is SSG going to try and use this opportunity to move forward and clean this up? They've used the Dark Veil to cross and deny those lines of sight from the high ground, but they're not going to be able to stop this res coming in, I don't think. And now they're going to have to fight Oxygen, but it looks like they have denied that res. Now they can push in. Reed is still on his back. Yeah, still on his back, but might be getting pulled back up. He's drowning at the moment, but now suddenly he gets a breath of fresh air, but it's still going to be grief from the other side. SSG trying to push up. You can also see other squads in the area trying to do damage at the same time as the circle is forcing everyone together. SSG not in the best of spots. Optic, however, are in a pretty good spot, and they can potentially pick up some KP here. Optic in one of those positions that might be endgame. Native eliminated, Temper elimin eliminated, and Ape Gang also gone in the last few seconds. We're down to eight squads now, and Optic, who didn't have Beacon, now find themselves in a great spot to potentially continue testing this end game complexity in the building alongside them still tsm now make their move though they control all of the southern side of this zone yeah tsm hold the southern side complexity and optic in the buildings oxygen also kind of fighting their way in it's going to be tougher for dropping gaming oblivion and elevate they're in the kind of harder spots to be able to force their way into the circle but they certainly can influence things in a way to frustrate those teams who are in some of the kind of more prime positions as i say that dropping gaming will be eliminated and optic are still dealing damage to oxygen oxygen just can't catch a break as tsm also starts to get involved the TSM are going to have to find some meds here, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They control the south side of this zone, and let's jump into a listening with TSM to see how they navigate this end zone. He's in the bin. He's sitting in the bin. I'm going. I'm going to have them all again. Safe there. We can't kill him. Okay, anyone have a syringe? Anyone have a syringe? No. He's looting the bodies. No, again. no. They have a wingman over here. They have a wingman over here. Okay, okay. We you got to we got to push north. I have twenty heavy. bro. No, no, no. I have thirty bullets. That's fine. 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 We have. I have a headquarters on me. Same headquarters on me. Well, they, they have a wingman on this team, by the way. They have a wingman over here on the north side. We're gonna rest They're resting right now. I'm not worried about that. We have to worry about north. One guy crossed here. Okay, guy. Okay. I think he's he swinging out. Yep, we got one. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. One. Dead. Uh, 95 flesh. They're going back inside the tunnel. There's okay, nobody okay, going sure, over. Sure they all crossed. Make sure we don't get mirrored. Okay. They did res. Make sure they don't mirror us. Yeah, one guy. One guy got res. One guy to do over there. I'm holding this north side. I'm holding north side. I have 24 heavy now. 24 heavy. I don't have heavy for you. I have 20. I only have energy. It. I only have energy. I have 300 energy though. Okay. Do you keep, can we play over here? I'm, I'm playing back. They're getting naded on, on the bin. Look at the bin. Look at the bin. Look at the bin. Free shots. Okay. Thank you, Evan. Free kills. Anchor. I'm going to come yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. TSM in a great position, but as we heard from the listening, Dan, the only issue for them is a lack of bullets. 
A lot of energy ammo, though. It was, <laughs> it was like just rubbing salt in the wounds. No, no heavy for you. Do have 300 energy if you need that. If you can find an energy weapon, there's oxygen. Still alive, by the way. They have been through the, the fire and the flames, but they somehow still find themselves in this bin into the top five. They have lost Aiden, but Aiden and Reeds can still make an attempt to try and do something in this game. But there is going to be eyes on them. TSM have seen them. EA also have eyes on them. I think that it might be over soon for oxygen as the circle starts to close you never know you never know let me tell you let me tell you if everyone else starts fighting they may be able to sneak up to that that wall line just in front of them as a duo and cause some problems tsm though they've got a wingman and that's certainly going to help things especially in the hands of reps one of the best precision players on mnk you could possibly want in to have the weapon in his hands there's a sentence there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> as TSM now still just waiting for everyone else to make their move and you got to say they're in the game winning spot Dan I, I believe and with everyone else having to leave and having to fight and move towards them there's probably a huge amount of KP for them as well yeah, as long as no, none of the other teams kind of jump out and send it onto TSM, they certainly are in prime position at the moment. And that's also, I think, why they want to inflict as much damage onto Oxygen and make other teams aware that Oxygen are there. If you fire bullets towards them, suddenly everyone else realizes there's players there they have to worry about. And then that is less gunfire that's going to be on TSM. It's now Circle beginning to close here and beginning to force these teams together. Oxygen do get eliminated, but now Elevate are going to be fighting Complexity and now Optic joins in as well. Tank Mazer gets big damage with that grenade, but the only problem is he hasn't got any bullets in his gun, has to reload. Can they finish off this fight, EA? Can they stay healthy enough to get their teammates back on their feet as well? They win the fight by the looks of things. Two teammates have gone down from Optic. There's only one alive, and that's going to be knocked, and they might be able to pop this res. Complexity are going to be the biggest threat here to TSM. They are the healthiest, and Complexity doing very well to stay away from this fight. Optic Don't take any damage. Let everyone else do the damage for you, as Optic will be eliminated, and then maybe Elevate might get back up to a full three here. Yes, they will, and they have a chance to reset. We've got a three versus three versus three. 3v3v3. Three three three. Complexity inside of the building. How, how makes the move to take the height? We mentioned how one issue could be ammo hit. Oh my. He's found a Mozambique in the second. Little pill to at least give him a little bit of a secondary to play with. How trying to take the high ground, trying to trap all these teams inside of this building and commanding where they have to go. And also putting himself in a position where he can do some damage with that R9. He can do a lot of damage as long as he doesn't get kind of Horizon Grav lifted on. Then Hal is in a great position right now. Both Dark Veils are down. Speaking of Grav lifts, up into the air go Elevate. And they do crack and knock Hal. This could be great news for Complexity. And once again, it's Zap with that Wingman, right? It's Wingman on Wingman action. You're going to see Rebs trying to respond with the Wingman himself now. Does some damage, but there's piercing spikes around him. The zone is closing behind him. And if he's not careful, he might die to zone. Three squads still remaining, but Rebs is the last last remaining member of TSM, and he barely has any health. TSM will fall as EA now move in to try and finish off this game. It's Shubi on his own. Shubi can't do it, and Complexity will be a champions here in game number two. Well, wow, Complexity play that final circle to perfection. They didn't get kind of excited about potential kills that were happening below them. They stayed and they held their ground and they waited even when they saw the knocks happening. Even when they saw Optic eliminated, they didn't just dive in. They knew they had to just play it safe, wait for someone else to do the work for you, and then you start to get involved. And I said I was worried about a Horizon Grav Lift, and it was exactly that, and it was the wingman that just oh, it punched Hal out of the air. It was, it was pretty disgusting to watch, actually. The wingman just does disgusting things. Yeah, I mean, you hear it in the comms, right? We learned a lot from the TSM listeners. Like, they have wingman. It's like, ah, okay, we, yeah. we cannot cross open ground with them because we know one bullet and we're pretty much in a situation where we're going to have to expend a shield battery to get back into the fight. And even to find cover is going to be difficult because we know how, you know, the rate of fire is quick enough on the wingman. If you hit one headshot, two more bullets. We saw it earlier on, three bullets, you're dead. So I think that situation and that presence of that weapon is something that people are as aware of now as a Kraber, right? Because it's it's that consistent output of damage. It's the, the extreme damage so quickly that can just turn fights on his head. And I've got to say, EA as well from the position they were in, holding off Optic on that low ground to be involved in that final fight, I think they had a great game. Yeah, they had a great game. I think the... Everyone in that final circle probably thought like they had a chance well, once it became the three versus three versus three. Elevate was certainly the team that was struggling a little bit when they had to try and force themselves onto the up upper ground, especially when we saw how deal that amount of damage. But Elevate did very well to use the Dark Veil to their advantage to get into a position. And then the Horizon Grab lift. I mean, it was beautiful to watch, but sadly it wasn't enough to, to win them the game. All right, then, Dan, take a break, my friend. Get your breath back, and we'll bring Stella back in to talk about what we just saw because Stormpoint <laughs> was fun. And I've got to say, 
Kimchi just sits on the side, you know, his internet comes out yes. and turns it back on. He's like, ah, oh, do you know what, boys? I think we should win some games of Apex. There he goes. Gets the job I know. Done. Listen, it's it's like when you work out, right? Like it's good to rest your muscles for a little bit and then come back stronger. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, I was watching Kimchi play ranked the other day and he was talking about ALGS and he was like, you know what? I don't hear people talking enough about complexity. They kind of write us off. So we're bringing our A game. And that's exactly what they did. And I'm so happy to see that. I mean, they were underneath TSM that entire time, took way too much damage, but they were able to control that end game circle so well, which is Really hard to do considering all the different elements that can happen in Apex. Yeah, I mean, those end circles, you're seeing it at the moment, right? It's very rare that you're going to see an end circle now where it's two players in a 1v1 playing around knockdown shields. Usually there's smokes down, there's dark veils that you're going to have to step through. You know, actually finding the target visually is very, very difficult to do. So those 1v1s can come down to skill, but also a little bit of luck sometimes that you might get that line of sight first before another player can. So complexity, top of the leaderboards. They had a great spot, remember? They were one of the only teams in that zone before everyone else really had an idea of where it was going. Eight kills alongside it, 20 points, a massive game from Complexity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were playing really well with Watson on their team as well. And TSM is in third place with this match. I mean, they got six kills, which is really great. I mean, it was just unfortunate. It was one of those situations where I feel like if they didn't use the wingman, it may have gotten a little bit more in their favor but also the positioning was just really bad at that point and i don't know if they could have come back from that yeah i think tsm were in a great spot i think the problem for them was the how try to make a play to take high ground and kind of dominate where everyone else was going to be because of the fact that he had a lack of a secondary we heard it i have no heavy ammo i can't use yeah. my you know my secondary <laughs> weapon so he had to swap to the mozambique and put himself in a position where he felt he could output the most damage so tsm game-winning spot but maybe just not the loot to go alongside it to really capitalize in a in the safest way they could have yeah absolutely and it's a little surprising to see lg and dark zero on the second page which i mean it was a tough tough opening for them but look at the top three here look at that damage everything is so close together now we do see complexity have a little less damage than the other two teams elevate and tsm just because they were in circle first and that's kind of what happens but they made up for it with placement points they certainly did indeed and a shout out to elevate i think their rotate was a lot tougher than complexities and i think they put themselves in a great spot and navigated that end zone well shout out as well to zap i mean we saw him go up in the uh, in the horizon lift the grav lift and just absolutely ping Imperial Howe off the top of that building, which kind of swung <laughs> the whole complexion of that fight back in their favor. And then clutching up in the 1v1 is what you what you live for if you're an Apex player. And that's exactly what they do in those final moments. Yeah, absolutely. I also want to point out that E8 did a great job of cleaning up Optic, who also fantastic jump from game number one. I mean, they really improved their gameplay. It was unfortunate that they did have that fight with Elevate down below, but Elevate also came out on top and they were doing really well. Yeah, I think Elevate winning that fight against Optic. Yes, Optic have to make the play. They have to drop. But sometimes it's very tempting to, you know, swing out yourselves. Oxygen was still alive at that point, I think. So you're worried about that line of sight and a couple of bullets swinging a fight away from you. Winning that fight against Optic was probably the key moment for them to picking up not only extra points and kills, but also some placements as well. But complexity, top looking very, very strong. You can see at the top of the leaderboards at the moment, 26 points for them. Yeah, absolutely. That is that is great for them. And Flat also with 21, which is great. TSM has 18, Dark Zero has 15, and LG is getting eight, and they are in 10th place right now. So going to be really interesting to see how match number three goes. I mean, we know that these teams are going to be really mad and want to come back and be able to get some of those points back, especially Dark Zero and LG. So I wonder, do you think that they're going to be a little bit more aggressive this time around? I think it's uh, Dog Zero going to play the Dog Zero way. I think the reason that they didn't have a great game, like by the red stands, that last one is they just didn't read the zone properly. It was a tough zone for everyone to read properly. So uh, Dog Zero will be fine. Yeah, that, that circle, that end circle was just atrocious, but it's all right. Hopefully with the next game, they get a better end circle. But real quick, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have the next game ready for you.
Welcome back, you beautiful bunch and you, Dan. It's good to be back, everybody. A little break, but it gives a little bit of time to get ready for the next game. The reason I didn't call you beautiful, Dan, is because you're better than that. You're even more beautiful. I don't even have a word. They haven't come up with a word yet for it in the dictionary design to define, excuse me, just what a Dan Gaskin is. But game number three is just around the corner. Complexity taking game two, Dan. And I've got to say, complexity have looked very impressive, not just today in that game, but in the previous week as well. Yeah, and I think this is exciting times for Complexity. I mean, uh, Monsoon's been through it all. We know that, and uh, it's always good to see when Complexity are on the rise a little bit. There's, We want everyone to win, right? We want everyone to have success. <laughs> Sadly, not everyone can have that success, and there is always going to be those stories of the struggles that some people go through. I'm talking in-game, by the way, and uh, it's great to see Complexity uh, finding a victory there, and hopefully they can use this now to propel themselves even more in this match week, because it's all well and good getting one, but you need to be consistent consistent to continue being at the top of the leaderboards. You do indeed. Let's see if consistency is going to be the name of the game for the likes of Flat and Complexity, the winners of game one and two. A little bit of quiet start for Dark Zero. I think that zone was a little bit rough for them. I think it was a little bit rough for a lot of people apart from Complexity, to be completely honest with you. So we're going to have to see how things change. But just want to highlight Oxygen, by the way. A much better start to the day after the first two games here on Stormpoint. Yeah, and I will give them credit for their resilience in that previous game as well. They were being <laughs> kind of targeted by what felt like the entire lobby, and they were able to still squeeze themselves into the latter stages as we're back to the wall, and it's round three, 1-1, one, one, fight. Here we go. Phase versus temper. How's it going to go? Let's see what goes down. Phase listening is ready. Do you know what? Let's jump in. Let's see what the comms are like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, out the window. I'm we should, we should swing out. Yeah, 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 I'm down. Swing it out, queuing up on the left. Look, yeah, me. with you, with you, with you, with you. On my back. I'm up. Horizon. Horizon's cracked, Horizon cracked. I didn't get to do anything. Horizon. On you, one on you, one on you. Oh my god. I didn't get to do anything. My two weapons were a 30-30 with zero bullets and a charge rifle. Phase fatality. Ball again, Dan. Always a 50-50 with those listenings. Uh, sad. Uh, we didn't get the right one, but you know that's just how the cookie crumbles. Uh, we go back, though, to Sonote Cave, where we had the previous 50-50 that was happening. Skirt against Cream, and Cream are 2-0 up in this contest. Albrelelli off the Revenant, and we've got Horizon back in the fray. We also have Bloodhound, too. All right, you're going you're gonna to do the boxing intro for this one as well? And I'll do the bell? Let no, you're not allowed to do that one. Uh, yeah, no, we don't even need to. I, yeah. Honestly, you have to, I, you have to pay someone to do. That. <laughs> don't do that. You, don't do that. I think yeah, literally you do. Uh, I don't even know if they're gonna fight yet. It looks like they are far enough away. But I said that last time, and then Cream kind of jumped on them. Whilst they think about fighting, we're going dead south. So we're going down towards coastal. Uh, DNO Gaming will be okay. I'm looking at ring consoles. Flat had one at Pylon. Ape had one as well. Oxygen got Native one. Oxygen are gonna be yet yeah, in a good position to rotate. TSM have got one to work with as well but they'll probably be moving in late ssg have one over towards devastated coast and launch pad but finally it looks like these two are going to be fighting let's never mind <laughs> let's get ready to apex yeah there we go oh, albert has gone down first again very unfortunate for him in this contest there's three games in a row where he's unfortunately gone down the change of legend isn't going to help and scurry might have to try and hit a glorious headshot to even the numbers for them with that charged up sentinel instead he'll hit some glorious shots with an r9 yeah, that works. That certainly evens the odds a little bit. And Abrelli has got back on his feet. So this is the best chance yet that Skirt have had. But back in another two versus three. Does Abrelli have the surprise factor? He's got Horizon, so he is able to grab lift onto the roof at least. So they can have high ground to work with. But are they going to be able to hold it for much longer? And can they think about a res? Certainly, once you hear that sound cue, you've got to get up there. But are they going to be quick enough? I think they're trying to bait it. I think it's pretty smart trying to force someone up. Now they might be able to stick it, have an output, a little bit of damage themselves. Carabolele looking to roll a little grenade inside and they are going to get awakening back to his feet. So this one isn't done yet. And Albrelli back to his feet, outputting some damage. And now we're going to see the climb up coming in from Cream. And it's going to be the Revenant. And this is the problem. Of course, the passive allows you to climb a little bit higher, a little bit stronger. And it makes it very unpredictable. You can't watch this jump up as you would expect. My favorite part of this is Optic drove right past this fight. They looked at it and said, nah, don't care. And they kept going. They're on to Barometer and they will continue on their rotation. Not worth taking the time here to get involved. The KP isn't going to be enough to stop them. Whilst this one is still elongated here as they just want to try and put these blue armors to their advantage. 
Amalele is going to drop, and he's going to have a flank here. Gets good damage down, but Awakening goes down. Scar is going to even it up. Are they going to be able to win this one? It's all up to Scurry now. He has the Sentinel. The shots have to be perfect, though. Smoke goes down. 126 on your back, son. Scurry's got a chance to do something magical here. Can he hit the shot? There's an heirloom. There's a chunk of flesh, but he can't reload in time. And Skirt will be eliminated. It's a valiant effort, has to be said. A far better performance than their first two. But remember, we learned from Amir, even if you go back to back to back games with zero points, you still have a chance when you move over to a different map where potentially you won't be contested. So we'll still keep an eye out for Skirt and maybe they can do what we saw earlier from Vamo Kure as they were able to make the comeback of all comebacks. I'm pleased that you got you remember what they're called again. <laughs> I didn't say Vamos this time. No. Uh, blame Mikel Arteta for that one. Oxygen oh, Esports, they do have that ring console. Like we mentioned, dropping over at Barometer. Old faithful, old POI and old home. And what a difference it makes, right, in a game day. They look so much more confident. They've got into a great spot here as well, down at Coastal Camp. And I swear we've seen this zone about a thousand times in scrims, by the way, during the week. Yeah, we've seen this often, Everyone so players are going to be play. very ready. Yeah, they, they should know where to be going, where to be moving, and I think that is evident from the map overhead of how much congestion there is just north of Coastal Camp and the positions that teams are going to find themselves in. Dark Zero making their rotate as well. Monsoon with his old faithful, the Sentinel. He's going to hit this, I bet you, any money. Told you. That's why I didn't take it. Yeah, smart. See, you know better. Yep. Don't gamble, everyone. So Complexity are in a, a fine position at the moment, but they are taking up a lot of space, which does leave room for teams to potentially surprise them from behind. Dark Zero uh, are still going to be making their move in. They're coming from the far south, by the way, and they're just going to be sneaking into the zone, potentially unaware to all those teams that have already found themselves on the southern tip. And you can see on this map overhead, there's a lot of them, right? There's a lot of teams that are in the south side uh, over towards Coastal Camp or just slightly north of it. And Dark Zero are just going to squeeze themselves in behind everyone and try and find somewhere to play. Yeah, it's a, it's a good example as well of how TSM have started to approach these kind of zones as well. You see they rotate, they've gone through Stormcatcher, they've had crafting there, they're now going over to Launchpad, where I'm pretty sure there's some crafting available as well. So their armors are going to be leveled up and they're going to have lots of meds to play with because they know this is going to be a really rough rotate for them. But one thing I will say, with the changes to Storm Point on these southern zones, I would say this time last year on Storm Point, I'm like, you ain't got a chance of winning this game if you're coming from the north side with so much yeah. traffic. But Coastal Camp, Echo HQ, they have a lot more playable areas than previous POIs did. So there is ways to force your way in from the north and maybe use an evac tower late that there wasn't previously. And you can put yourself in a position to at least be involved in that conversation. Yeah, you've got to be involved with the conversation. If, if you're a team who has goals of being a you know, a LAN team or at least a, a champion because everyone wants to be a winner, then you've got to be putting yourselves in the conversation game after game after game to get those reps in, to make sure that you can see those end games coming through. It's all well and good doing it in scrims, but competitive lobbies very different to scrim lobbies. As you can just look at the amount of teams on that southern side, it is going to be, it's going to be fine for those teams arriving from the north, right? But then it's what happens afterwards. It's where that next circle goes. If it does keep pulling south, which, you know, everyone's banking on that, and that's what we've seen in scrims, then the teams arriving from the north are certainly going to struggle a little bit. I wonder if LG are just trying to play for third zone info here over at Echo HQ. They were there for quite some time, maybe watching their back, and... Maybe they've stopped watching their back at just the wrong time because TSM are now making their move in behind where LG were. And they land safely without taking any damage. Now they can look to posture up and look to do a little bit of damage themselves. Imperial How doesn't have a sight on the Hemlock, but the Hemlock itself is enough to scare off many teams. Yeah, just terrifying. I mean, you don't really want to go up against it in a 1v1. I mean, LG versus TSM, it's a fight that I would watch day after day, time after time. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. A fight that is happening, though. Elevate versus Native. Again, these two have been scrapping for the last three matches on Stormpoint because they share such similar rotations and similar paths. But Native, they have the better of them right now. They do should be going down, and that's going to turn the numbers in their favor at least. They rotate in to take the bottom side of this building. They have a white armor swap at the bottom of it as well, but they want more than this. 105 is going to be pretty good as Mamba will take down Zach Mazer. And even though it's been a great start for EA, this might look like a game where they don't come out of it with too much. I mean, they've done well to survive and at least escape with one. I love this spot, by the way. Defying the laws of gravity as always. It's Horizon. Does Horizon, it does. yep. 
But Native, it doesn't look like they're going to be too desperate to look for that final player. Instead, it's about looting up. They hold the northern side, and this is what we're talking about, right? Arriving from north, you're going to be fine for the time being. You can win those engagements, you can dominate that northern side, but then as you get closer to the southern POI is when you're going to start to really see those struggles. So you need to have a game plan. I mean, evac towers, we have seen zones like this where people just evac tower in and find playable space. But because of the amount of ring consoles that were available to the southern teams here, I don't think that's going to be as easy as perhaps it has been in the past. Ooh, LG are finding out the complexities there. <laughs> and now they're going to have to move back a little bit. A little bit of an awkward angle. Sweet. Trying to land some shots. And now LG find themselves in a position where it's about survival instead of rotating. They are going to be safe for quite some time. But maybe this position isn't one that they feel is comfortable to hold with lines of sight that are going to deny teams putting damage onto them consistently. So LG looking for somewhere else and Sweet is doing a little bit of scouting at the moment but there's a team walking up on them and Slayer's got to be so careful. Really careful here because if you do get knocked it just opens up. It's a fresh invite for someone to just come in and push you in and just take any position away from you and get a little bit of free KP as Sweet doing so well to dance his way out of damage as LG are just trying to escape. We've already seen one rat attempt from Sweet today when he got into the top five. Well he's going to have to do a master class of writing if he's gonna be able to do the same but maybe he can actually help our slayer here i mean sweets full park full parkour parkour Are you okay he's doing it all yeah i'm good oh parkour sorry parkour. You, you, you cut out a little bit i thought you said he's doing full pog and i was like what was what's the follow-up here but yeah full parkour and really is surviving i'm too old to say things like that these days yeah, yeah you are yeah 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 it's be real Dog Zero, they're involved in this end zone though, and they are uh, looking for points at the moment. They've had a couple of quiet games. Zero gets good damage, but takes a fair bit himself, and that's the danger of popping up and trying to spray when there's 18 squads still alive, and a lot of them very, very close. There is a uh, rubbing shoulders and there's rubbing body parts with too many play uh, people huh? close that you find out about by only being in this position, Dan. Yes, indeed, but in Circle is going to keep pulling south, by the way, as expected. Uh, anyone who was hoping for maybe a, a, a northern shift to try and get out of what is going to be an incredible endgame with the amount of teams that are here are going to be bitterly disappointed at the obvious Circle pull. So Dark Zero, you know, they're in it. They're in a pretty good spot here, actually. They've got some high ground to work with, plenty of cover if they want to use it. They just need to be worried about the northern teams arriving and potentially desperating a push on to them. I mean, one thing they did really well, Dark Zero, was force LG away and into all of the crossfire that you saw from other teams. And now they've claimed all this space themselves. It's one thing that I love that Dog Zero do. They're never afraid to, like, fully send two players in to try and get a knock just to force teams away. It's something they do really well to command space around them. Slayer is still alive for LG. Unfortunately, though, Zap is dead now for E8. That will be the end of their game. The solo player wasn't able to do it. And look, Native found him eventually. Yeah, they waited, <laughs> they were <laughs> around, they weren't going to allow any sort of uh, banners to be retrieved. They wanted to make sure they got that extra little bit of KP. Uh, by the way, 17 squads as Zone 3 is about to close. This is the kind of lobby that we expect to see in North America. But the 17 might go down by a few as this zone closes, because we've got four, five teams who are outside of this zone, and we've got a few gatekeepers. Eternal and Oblivion are certainly gatekeeping the lobby at the moment, and also TSM might join them on that. But Native, gatekeeping out in the distance as well. They're stopping GKS from even being able to approach. They said, look, if we're going to be gatekept when we approach, we can't have anyone following us, otherwise we have no chance in this fight. Slayer did fall, so LG have been eliminated. Not a, a great start for them here on Storm Point after uh, some very impressive performances in previous game days, but a Crave is going to help Native on their way forward, you would imagine. But now things are starting to get a, a little bit ugly. A little bit... The, the, I mentioned the... I'm going to use a Subway maybe as a better example because obviously we're in North America. But let me tell you, the Tube, which is the equivalent in London, in rush hour, this is what it feels like. It is too sweaty, it is too close, and everybody at some point is going to break. Yeah, it's just absolutely jam-packed. No room to even think, let alone breathe at this point for some of these squads. And it is going to come down to IGLs to kind of make those quick, fast-paced decisions, but also everyone to think for themselves in those engagements because you have to be dealing the damage. Speaking of, people starting to fight now. Temper have just lost one. GKS looking to move in and clean up this damage. Big damage coming in from the Arg Star. Temper will be eliminated in the meantime. So GKS will be safe just as they walk their way towards zone. I'm going to use the Conduit Q just to make sure that they can get their armor back and stay in this fight for a little bit longer. In Elsewhere in the kill feed, you can see that Reps has just picked up one as well. And it looks like TSM are having a look down onto this. And this is bad news for both teams who are still fighting inside this building. Yeah, really bad news, honestly. 
This fight's going on a little bit too long for their liking. GK is still just trying to poke and prod. Elsewhere, TSM starting to get involved in getting damage of their own on the northern side, but GKS at least will be able to pick up the scraps here and get any loot that they want as teams start to try and escape, or at least the last remaining players do. TSM looking towards it. Looks like Oblivion are not going to be able to escape. No, 13 squads now, as we expected, as zone 3 closed. That's when we started to get rid of a few of the teams that were arriving late. TSM still looking for these KP. I think TSM realized this is a KP heavy game for them and placement is going to be something they're going to have to maybe think as a secondary play with the amount of teams that are already located in and around where this zone is going to be ending oxygen by the way just to give you an idea of who is in a great position for the end game they are that team at the moment the barometer ring console gave them that info early and they have played off the back of it superbly gks now make their rotation as well Norsey does have the wall available on the catalyst to get down if they do take some crossfire here from tsm so they do have a rotate option and they've managed to just sneak up that hill this is a smart play from both complexity and tsm right now because they know there's not gonna be too much playable space actually in the zone so they are just holding out the teams where they can potentially pick up some points and maybe get into the top 10. That's kind of what you're thinking about right now is first and foremost is getting into the top 10, getting extra placement points and the KP. Then once you've defeated those teams, you start to think about the bigger picture. How do we actually win this game? How do we get in? Uh, as for Optic and Native, it's a similar scenario, but it's on the southwest side as Optic are now going to press their advantage after getting some initial damage. Yeah, this is fairly isolated for this time in the lobby, to be honest with you, this fight for Optic Gaming, and they did get a little bit of initial damage down, so they're desperate to try and push this, but Native have already shown they're no pushover in these 3v3s, and that Thermite, though, might change things. That is burning, it is singeing, and it forces Optic to retreat. One player has gone down, Skill Cakes is doing all sorts of movement tricks to try and stay alive himself but Optic who got the initial damage the Thermite has changed the game and it was isolated but now teams who are already in zone have started to hear it and started to join in with the gunfire the likes of Dark Zero were also pressuring as Optic will go down and Native could be next if they're not careful but they may be able to reset no Dark Zero will not allow it Dark Zero push in and take that position away from them ensuring the extra KP on soon overlooking this as well as his teammates on complexity to see if they can pick up a few of these pieces somehow tsm have worked their way into zone as well one team up on the extreme height here is going to be dno as well and tsm are probably thinking what's our next play how do we try and get forward because look how far they have to go in comparison to everyone else they'll have to go through the likes of complexity dark zero potentially here if they want to get into zone speaking of dz jim burton's just got another knock for them is that onto Eternal? If it's onto Eternal, that will give them the chance to potentially push up and take one of the better positions. And that's what Dark Zero want to try and do is force the agenda, force themselves into this zone a little bit. As you can see, there's not just Eternal that are there. Oxygen also in the area. Dark Zero doing very well to at least deal that damage. And Carter, I'm sorry, but it might be the end for you shortly. The only thing that could save them is Oxygen. Oxygen are above and could pressure Dark Zero here and stop them pushing. And they do so. They want to double swing this. They know it's free KP. Zero is thinking, do I use a Kraber shot here? Do I force this team back? Now they force the team back with the damage. Now the swing is going to come in. Easy KP for Dark Zero. They take it down internal and they take a spot right in the center of zone as well. The question for DZ is, composition-wise, I'm pretty sure they're not playing Horizon. So they're not going to be able to jump up to that high ground very easily. They might have to work their way back around, but the Kraber might create an opening for them. Yeah, how do they stop themselves being grief from oxygen from above? That's the big question but they may also realize that Oxygen hold one of the better positions right now and also are going to be joined by a lot of teams very shortly as the circle closes. Certainly Bangalore Smokes are going to play a very big part as they always do. Now look at how many squads are going to be on the northern side as everyone's starting to force their way in. TSM now taking a lot of damage as they approach the zone. They've got Complexity solo to their back and flat right in front of them. Oxygen controlled the center of zone though. TSM have lost reps. How's trying to work forward now with Verhulls, but they're under so much fire. If they can sneak their way into the top 10 or the top 9, that would be a win for them. But unfortunately, Verhulls looks like he's about to go down as well, but gets the shield swap just to keep himself alive for a few seconds longer. And now he's kind of tiptoeing around all sorts of problems on the floor. You've got ultimates coming down from all sorts of angles, and he wasn't able to do so. He will be eliminated. TSM will fall. Complexity is still alive, and so are GKS. Oxygen as well, still just holding prime position, or one of the prime positions, should I say. Plenty of high ground to work with, and they're joining in on a lot of these fights, but there is 
So many squads. This is the most squads we've had in a final circle so far today. Nine squads remain. It's going to be eight very shortly, though, as DNO and Dark Zero start to pressure some of those squads who have arrived late. Monsoon still alive for Complexity as a solo. Maybe we'll get spotted out soon. Yes, he does get spotted out, and it's going to be the end for Complexity. They are eliminated, and we're down to eight squads. Dino had to leave that extreme high ground by doing so. They've taken a really strong position as well. Did damage, moved in off the back of it, and like you say, taking a few teams down with them as we find ourselves with seven squads now remaining. Dino are going to be in a good position to just wait out this armor coming down from the sky from the Bangalore. The Rolling Thunder not going to be doing anything here as Oxygen continue to just command space in and around the end game here. It's an opportunity we need to take. Oh, Oxygen listening is available. Let's jump in. Can you, can you? Yeah. Can we take a spot back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are they walling us? Safe on me, safe on me, safe on me. Safe on me, safe on me from Bangalore. Yeah, I don't shit. Stare at this wall. From the inside, stare another at this bang wall. wall. Another bang wall. Safe here. Safe on me too. Listen, we want to take space back here. Listen, I think I'm going to ult above us. us. I'm going to ult above us soon. I am too, I am too. So, on me, on me, solo bang. Okay. Fight him, fight him. Oh, no, 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 no. Q me, Q me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got him, I got him. I ulted on top, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I'm peeking this with you. I'm peeking this. I can't this. see, I can't see. Stay, stay on me, stay on me. It's off. I know. Can we need to the wall? Heal, Van, heal. Heal. Yes, yes. Shoot this wall when it could drops, okay? Yeah, yeah. Stay on me, stay on me. I'm hiding behind my conduit ult. You could do the same. Oh, we win this fucking game, boys. Look at our spot. Yeah, we should clear height, Van. I think we should clear height when this wall drops. Okay. They're, they're in a, they're in a bin. They're in a bin. In the corner of the bin. Bin, So much damage. I'm part of it, part of it. Bang dead! It's, it's two more in the corner, just spray the knock, it's a gray knock! Spray my knock, it's a gray knock! Kill these guys! Yeah, yeah, I'm too sure you Oh shit, I'm putting damage here down, but they're down to just two! Down to just two, but still fighting tooth and nail, and make it into the top three, and potentially can still influence this final circle in a big, big way. SSG also still alive. Ape Gang, I believe, are just a solo. So it's a 2v2 here now. SSG versus Oxygen. It's SSG versus Oxygen, but SSG are going to die to zone. It's as simple as that. They don't have a horizon to get back up, and the duo stand tallest. Oxygen, the chase to barometer has worked, and they will win your final game here on Stormpoint. And they'll be delighted with that. They were probably concerned the entire time when Dark Zero were below them, but in the end, Dark Zero can't get up to them quick enough. They didn't have the ability to get up to them either. So Oxygen were able to kind of position themselves and take fights elsewhere. And they would have been delighted to then see SSG down on the low ground without the ability to take that fight either. But SSG also with a second place, which I'm sure they'll be very happy with. Yeah, I think SSG probably look at that situation, realize they're a duo. They don't know the other team's numbers in the lobby. They're like, we have an opportunity to get an extra KP, guarantee ourselves second place. We're going to take that. Even though Oxygen were a duo themselves, they didn't have that information. They wouldn't have seen that kill fever with all the chaos that's going down in those final moments. So SSG making a decision you can understand to try and not win that game and secure some extra points. But Oxygen, man, it, how crazy is it, right? To just change your POI, where you drop, and all of a sudden everything looks like the Oxygen of old. Yeah, and, you know, it, it can go one of two ways. Like, the zones can not pull you away, and then you'll be like, all right, we shouldn't have moved. But I think POIs and making sure you are not having contests happening. I mean, I know that Oxygen went through contests during scrims, etc. You've just got to get away from them. You've got to make sure you find a POI that is comfortable for you, a rotation that suits your playstyle a little bit more. Let's take a look at the results and see just how everything looked, though, because Oxygen, they took first and they got seven kills, 19 points for them. SSG pick up 12 in the end. DNO also with seven kills, so they get 12 points. And then Dark Zero, they may have finished in seventh, but nine kills for them keeps them at a very healthy points total. Yeah, Dark Zero just always find a way to guarantee points, right? It's very rare you'll see a Dark Zero kind of two-point game or something like that. They're always going to win a team fight or two on their way forward. And i got to say, SSG have looked pretty impressive so far today as well, like you rightly pointed out. TSM, again, involved, I would say, towards the end game, but a very tough rotate for them to even get into that top 10. They've picked up 3kp along their way to that top 10 finish. But at the other end, Optic again, a little bit quiet. FaZe losing that contest once more, which is really going to hurt them here. And LG, quiet day for them so far, Dan. Yeah, eh? quiet game for a few, but I think for LG in particular, maybe the expectation was there after a, a big start or a fantastic start for them here in Pro League and, you know, there's always going to be ups and downs and I don't think they'll be too disheartened. There are still two matches for them to make a big wave here in this A and B lobby, but is it going to be enough to take a victory? Unlikely, but, you know, I've seen stranger things happen.
But it's all set up beautifully now for us to, to keep this thing rolling down. I think Stormpoint has been a little bit, I, I would say, unpredictable with how some of those zones have pulled. Uh, it's the first time I've seen some of those zones in quite some time. We have seen the, the one that we saw in the last game, but game number two was the one that really stood out for me. The complexity win where they managed to close out those that final moment because... That zone pull is kind of, I think, indicative of what we've seen a lot this season, right? It's the surprise factor. Everyone's like, oh, we've played this since Scrims. This is where this goes. And it's like, ah, Pro League's a little bit different. And we'll have to see if that is going to continue as we head back to World's Edge. But we'll bring Stella back into the conversation as we uh, take, gives ourselves a little bit of time to just recover from what we've seen. And uh, Stella, how are you feeling? I'm good. I It has been a great day of Apex matches. I mean, it has been really good to see these teams that we did speak about needing to step up their game, actually step up their game, because like you said, a lot of the RNG has pulled in their favor, especially with DNO Gaming. I mean, they were in Coastal Camp and Oxygen Esports. They really didn't have to move too much. Everyone had to come to them. That makes fights a lot easier. And I want to say Oxygen did a great job of just communicating. Their comms were extremely clear and even calm when I probably would have been losing my mind. So obviously the teams are bringing their A games and it's really, really good to see them just working together and being a fluid unit, Gaskin. Yeah, I think that every team should be proud of themselves with how they performed so far. Those who are in the top half of the leaderboard, of course. Uh, then in the bottom half of the leaderboard, that's where people are starting to scratch their heads a little bit, saying, all right, well, if we're in the bottom half of the leaderboard of this lobby and we're also in the kind of lower trend of the overall standings, what can we do in World's Edge to really change things? Maybe World's Edge is a better map for some of those teams, but this is crunch time. We mentioned it right at the start. Like we're getting to the point now where if you fall too far behind, you're leaving yourself with little room and little time to try and come back into things. Absolutely. I think FaZe is probably one of those teams that is victim to that. And I do hope that World's Edge is a little bit better for them because they've lost two out of three of their contests today. And it is a rough mental image going forward for them, I'm sure. But to help us break things down and look at what teams can be doing better, we have a very special guest, Church, visiting us. And we are going to be able to get an interview with her. Hello. Hello, hello. It's a pleasure to be back. <laughs> Yes. So now it is my understanding that you're the first black female caster for the North American Challengers circuit. Is this right? Yes, that is. That's amazing. I feel like Apex is such a good game and esports for championing diversity, especially with their in incredible roster of legends. And your title actually made me realize I'm the first female South Korean caster and host for ALGS. So I'm really happy to be speaking with you today. That's incredible. Yes. Um, the, the title of being the first of hopefully many to come is definitely something that I pride myself in and also always keep in consideration that it's not just about me. It goes further than that. It goes down to the nitty gritty of there needs to be more. And I think that Apex does a phenomenal job of showcasing diversity throughout, whether it be the game or their talent. I want to jump in here and just ask a quick question before we start looking at the uh, the zones and everything that you've been watching today, Church. And I wanted to get who you had your eyes on before we saw the games today, because I know we've, you, it would be very easy for you to say the t three teams that have won so far, but who are you watching coming into today and saying, hey, I've got my eyes on these as a team to potentially watch? Listen, um, Rambo is a, a good friend of mine and I always want to see him succeed. So I was definitely looking forward to finding out if, you know, Native really puts the pieces together. I think they um, played definitely better today than they have previously. I think that things are starting to piece together. And um, whenever they have come up against somebody, they have played very well. <laughs> That is my puppy dog. Into the room. <laughs> I know. Uh, hey, we're gonna I mean, one today. the interview yeah, just the got even better. Uh, I mean, perfect. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, we talk about teams that you are kind of like looking towards. Is there anyone who really is underperforming a little bit in your eyes today or anyone that you expected a little bit more that hasn't maybe stood up on Storm Point? I would say Skirt um, definitely threw me for a curveball there. I, I did anticipate them playing better today in this series against Cream. However, I think some of their choices have been a little bit questionable, and I'm hoping to see them do a little bit better in performance-wise going towards World's Edge. Yeah, well said. Now, you did such a great job of this in EMEA, so we're going to have you do this again. Can you break down the action in the final circles of the last three games we just did? It would be my absolute pleasure. 
So going into match one, we did have a devastated coast end zone. It was on the outskirts. However, we did have teams like Oxygen, uh, Dark Zero, SSG, and GG, aka Flat. Occupying space, Dark Zero did a phenomenal job of taking up space on the bridge, but I don't know if they really considered how much of a threat SSG was being in their backside, and they came to find out very shortly how much of a threat they were, in fact. And I do have to give kudos specifically to Flat for taking their time and occupying space. As you can see here, they, they take that wide angle, they retreat when they need to, the communication was clearly there, able to have somebody hold the back while pushing up forward, and as the zone creeps in, as SSG does get eliminated, they start to notice the development of this, and they take height, they take further space, they play big rather than playing small. They do have the kill leader on their side, so they're already feeling themselves, and they start to clutch it up here. You see Flat take these angles from the heavens above, get great shots with the 30-30, and Oxygen is just left with really no option there. Now going into match two, this zone pull had me absolutely bamboozled, to say the least. TSM did a phenomenal job of clearing out Jurassic, taking out teams in their way such as Flat, and taking space on the, the height. Pal here does take a different perspective, which I really enjoyed. However, it seems that it did end up biting them later on because EA did take that queue up, trying to get height over that Dark Veil, and Zap hit his shots. I mean, you, you can't deny a great, a great wingman. However, I know reps had the wingman too. It just seems that it came up short there with Zap coming down from the heavens above, absolutely connecting each shot effortlessly on Hal, which definitely threw TSM in a blender for a bit. Reps did a phenomenal job trying to stay alive, trying to get KP on the way out. But as we knew, complexity was sitting, taking their time, allowing EA to collect the Infinity Stones for Complexity to end up grabbing the, ga the gauntlet, ultimately. And then in match three, another south zone going over towards Coastal Camp, which was DNO's home. It seems that Oxygen decided to take up space, you know, they said, the rent's due, it's time for us to move in, and they did a great job of that. Ended up taking up so much space that it pressured other teams to fight each other earlier on. And DNO goes out just like that to Oxygen. They are able to get armor swaps. And unfortunately, SSG falls down low without any option to come back up. And I mean, a celebration for, for some, but it definitely a celebration for Oxygen as they take the win effortlessly there with no hope for SSG, unfortunately, falling down to the low ground to get that KP. Yeah, that last one is such an unfortunate positioning, but thank you so much for breaking down the action. You are a god, you are amazing. Now we're gonna look at the results here. And is this kind of what you expected to come out of today? I have to say, LG's performance definitely was not what I had expected going into Stormpoint with their success rate thus far being above 50% and dropping gaming as well, with them being severely higher than most on Stormpoint, them being in 10th, of course, isn't the biggest um, issue going into World's Edge. However, the outcome was not what I anticipated going into the first three matches. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do. Okay, so with these end circles that you were describing for us, I do kind of want to talk about legend pick rates for North America. I think it's really interesting because these end circles get so chaotic and we did see reps unable to move forward because of the conduit alt that was just laying there. So do you think in season 20 that we're going to see a change in just, I don't know, a, a nice little meta change up for the legends so that maybe the end circles aren't so chaotic? It's funny that you mentioned that. One hope that I definitely have for season 20 going forward is a, a reason for people to choose a different legend, a reason for the meta to consistently adapt to the gameplay, a reason for there not to be a hard stuck meta, a hard reason of why you have to pick so and so. You, ha you have other options now, more um, dynamic choices and different compositions coming from all different angles. I'm really hopeful that you know, in season 20, we have something that changes it up a bit. Yeah, I want to see more ballistic. I want to see Mirage. Let's go. Well, thank you so much for speaking well. with us, Church. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah absolutely. Oh, don't, don't, don't Thank get you so much on set started me. about that. <laughs> All right. Bye. Listen, on set, I got you. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> All right, well, thank cannons. you for That's that. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, the hashtag is out there. It's worldwide. I know, right I now. know. And I'm trying not to make that hashtag a thing because that is terrifying. Uh -huh. But yeah, unfortunately, I have to give you all the reins, so don't get too unhinged without me. <laughs> you have to give us the reins, which means I can talk about how Pathfinder needs leg cannons moving forward in season 20. Uh, this is going to be no, a lot of fun. No, absolutely not. All right, well, you're leading us into the next game, so please go ahead and uh please don't talk about pathfinders like cannons because that's uh, okay fair enough yeah. all right let's get into the games then let's talk about it let's talk about it let's get it into world's edge and let's talk about how pathfinder <laughs> these leg cannons everybody let no, him finish that. his let's, story everyone let me let me let, me, let him finish his story <laughs> that's what the hashtag was all about everybody it was about pathfinder getting leg cannons anyway if you don't want to know what i'm on about or you don't want to know what i'm on about which might be another option go back and watch the emir broadcast let's talk about uh, world's edge though dan let's turn our attention away from nonsense and my brain and how it works because it's a terrifying place back to apex legends that we're seeing right now because uh it's uh, still very much an open lobby i would say some of the big hitters haven't had some zones that have kind of gone their way i would say and it's been more of a rise of a uh, to the top of some of the teams we were hoping and expecting might show a bit of form this week yeah, and but, uh, well, they were words. When you get over to World's Edge, it does allow other teams who we may have had the expectations to still shine. We saw it happen in Amir, a team that got zero points on Storm Point, then went out, got a victory, got a third place on World's Edge and propelled themselves into the top six. So teams that have been fantastic at World's Edge, uh, Dark Zero, the best World's Edge team that we have in North America based on the amount of points they've accumulated. LG as well, the third best team that we have in North America. And Complex actually in fifth when when we look at world's edge points so those are the three squads who i'll be looking at to potentially pick up some big points here and we have to also look back at you know what happened in a and b last time we did see a few teams struggle in the early stages but then pick it up dark zero you know they found their first victory last time when it came, went over to world's edge so we will see teams who have a preference here we know that certain contests are going to happen on storm point that won't happen on world's edge so it's a it's a fresh slate for a lot of these squads i think if you're phase as well you have to take a little bit of uh Maybe inspiration from what you saw from Vamo Kere a little bit earlier, right? In Amiya, they lost every single contest on Storm Point. Then they went over to World's Edge. They won a game and they ended up getting inside of the, I think it was the top seven or eight, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember off the top of my head. Sixth. Sixth, excuse me. Wow. I mean, I'm underselling what they managed to achieve. So that kind of turnaround can certainly happen as we have a look at some of the, uh, the drop spots here for the teams that we would expect. And Skirt and Oblivion. Skirt have had a rough time on the contest. We saw them losing every single one over at Sonote Cave. The question is, will Overlook give uh, a little bit of a different coat of paint to their success so far? Are they going to be able to actually find some KP, win that contest and move into the game? Well, the good news is FaZe aren't contested at Geyser. I remember last time we saw A and B, they were contested on both and they really weren't having a great time. But now they at least have Geyser to themselves or so we think. I guess we will be confirming that as we get a little bit further into this game and once we see the players dropping out of said dropship, but I'm excited to see whether, you know, anyone is going to surprise us. Is anyone going to show up? For example, E8 were able to pick up a top three last time on World's Edge, even though we've not really seen them been able to elevate themselves into a top position on Storm Point. Well, let's see how this game goes. We're in Legend Select now. We're going to have to see how the comps change up a little bit as well. I'm expecting... Maybe not so many Bloodhounds as what we saw previously. Oh, well, we are seeing a little bit of Revenant still on the... Uh, on Team Cream. Seeing elsewhere, just trying to cast my eyes across and see if there's anything else jumping up. Skirt are going to be running it as well. Arabelle is going to be back on the Revenant too. So I'm kind of hoping that one of the, those two teams gets the win they contest and actually gets into the game to show us a little bit of the value those legends can give. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if the initial Revenant pick from Abrelelli was because they were contested by Cream and they wanted to say, all right, well, if you've got a Revenant, we want to have one as well, just in case that fight goes on long enough that the ultimates actually go into the equation. So it didn't really work out for Skirt in the end, but perhaps they get more of a chance to play Apex Legends here on World's Edge because the dropship is flying through the sky. The players are hurtling towards their POIs. 
and it's time to start match number four. Little note just at the start of this game, unfortunately for a flat and flat fans around the world, which I'm sure there are many of, uh, two players have unfortunately had a power outage, so they're going to be playing this one as a solo. So shout outs to, uh, to flat and whoever the solo is going to be. Give them uh, a little bit of extra juice. Maybe they can land on a Kraber, who knows, to see if they can find some points in this game. But unfortunately, that's what happens in life, isn't it? It's just <laughs> some things we can't control, everybody, and losing power is, uh, is going to be one of those. Yeah, a shame considering that they've, you know, they put on some really good points, but, you know, it's just one of those things and maybe, who knows, they'll pick up a point here or there. Now, Cream not going to be in a contest as they were on Storm Point. They are going to be kind of sharing Skyhook with Dark Zero a little bit, but Dark Zero, as we know, they split themselves between Trials and Skyhook. So as long as they don't spread themselves too thin and make themselves vulnerable to Cream, then they should be okay. Right, circle-wise, heading towards Survey Camp on set. Survey camp indeed. And if you are a Complexity fan or if you've watched Apex Legends for long enough, you should know by now that Complexity are landing right there. And that is going to be great news for them. They've got a little bit of time to loot up as well as there's nobody who's making too quick a rotation to speak of. So they should be able to get all of the loot that they need on their loot path to really give themselves an opportunity. But also the, the one thing I think for Complexity is do they have a ring console that they can hit before I didn't they see have one. to move? I'm pretty sure that they will play the northern side of this just because of how the zone is anyway. So they should be in a good position for end game, regardless of the fact they don't have a ring console. Yeah, it is one of those circles where I think you can kind of guess it's going to be pulling north, but SSG are in the same position. SSG only have a survey beacon from what I can see. No ring console, so they're going to have to kind of play the guessing game as well. Tempo were able to get ring console information, so they're moving. The same can be said for native. Uh, as for complexity, if they look to the skies and start seeing people arrive, then I think they'll get a good idea of where this circle is going to be going anyway. Uh, FaZe have a ring console down towards Geyser, so they're going to be able to move relatively quickly. I imagine they will take the eastern side, probably go just past Overlook, and then try and hit the northeast. Uh, but Native have found themselves in the building very quickly here, but they have moved, and they have not brought much loot with them. Three <laughs> white armors. How do you feel about that one? I feel that they're going to have to get some damage done if they want to have any kind of success in this game, unless the composition is going to allow them to barricade themselves inside of a building for the long game. Elsewhere, you can see that Oblivion had a little bit of a, maybe an issue for a few seconds here. This is going to be happening over a climatizer, and it's Oblivion and SSG who are very, very close to each other, and Temper are also in the area. So for now, Oblivion are saying, hey, we know we're safe for now. We don't want to take a battle. We've got two white armors. We've got Arcology, who's got even less than that at the moment it might it might look blue and it is blue your eyes don't deceive you but there's not a lot of hp left in it 95 pick rate by the way for bangalore 19 of our teams have bangalore in this lobby very much because they're the chads of the lobby that's very what much the dominates the meta at the moment also three lobas uh three people playing loba potentially for the support abilities of course you can craft a banner with loba or anyone from the team can craft a banner if you have a loba but also the ability to Get that black market down. Get any extra loot in the late game or in the early game whenever you want to use it. So interesting to see which Loba teams we have and maybe we'll see them as we go through. Is Dark Zero are going to be making their way to the northern side from Skyhook and they're going to be going through Tunnel. They could potentially be the first team that Complexity has to deal with here. So I can be able to hit the support bin as well to get a little bit more out of it. And I'll tell you what, that is always a good thing to find. The two to four for that 30-30 repeat. It just gives you maximum range on that weapon to chip away at some shields and make sure that you're in a position to level the Evos up, as we all know is the name of the game for a lot of these squads, especially if they can get an early good spot. Speaking of which, SSG might think they've got a pretty good spot as they're hoping that this might pull down towards them, but the only problem for them is they don't have a ring console that they can hit for now. So they might be a little bit uh, hoping, shall we say, that they're going to be in a position where the zone is going to pull, but they might get a little bit of an unfortunate uh, surprise as do Team Cream, because LG, even though we saw Sweet go down, will win this fight and take a spot now in survey. Yeah, and they should be able to get back up. It doesn't look like anyone's going to be jumping on them, so they're going to be absolutely fine. Look at the white armors. I mean, even blues as well. All these teams have moved so fast because even if you don't have a ring console, I think this circle is one of the more predictable ones with it holding the northern tip as much as it does. Uh, so a lot of teams have moved as quickly as they can just to try and get a building. We saw in the match three, what, we had like 18 teams left going into zone three, so people are playing 
pretty slow. People are playing a little bit more zone heavy in this lobby at the moment. That could change in World's Edge, but typically World's Edge is usually more zone heavy than Storm Point at times. So maybe we'll even see more when it comes down to it. But 19 squads at the moment. Team Cream, the only team that's been eliminated. Yeah, Phaser down to just two as well. And Snide down and Pandas having to back right up there as Zero Tricky will be going down. Interesting to see what their next play is going to be. I'm trying to look around to see if there is any way that they might be able to craft a banner to get Zero Trekkie back in but I've got to be honest with you it doesn't really look like there's many options for them so if they do want to do this they're going to have to go a long way out of zone to try and get their teammate back into this game. Team Scott are going to be able to play some Apex Legends by the way which is good news for them. Albrelli is going to be moving off the Revenant onto the horizon by the looks of things so we were fed false information everybody we have to apologize publicly for that but we do more importantly get to see them play so that we can actually confirm that that is the case. Yeah, I think it was World's Edge last time where we saw Skirt pick up a top three as well to give them a decent amount of points in the lobby. Same can be said for FaZe. I think FaZe took a second place on World's Edge. So both teams who have been struggling a little bit in their contests are now going to have the opportunity to play some Apex Legends. I mean, yeah, okay, FaZe have lost one, but they still might be able to be getting themselves into the later game and potentially they can get that banner back. We'll have to see. All right, zone is about to close. So all those teams who don't have ring console information are about to get it and then they can start to make their moves if they would like. Four, five, six teams outside of the circle. So GKS and Oxygen potentially could fight here. Skirt are going to be right next to them. So that no one really wants to start that fight at the moment if they're aware of the other teams being in the area. And Skirt might just go on their merry way and decide to leave that one. Personally, I, I would do that. I would get away from that. There's no point. You can rotate ahead of them and you can try and get a, a better spot. Looking at who is in a good position, you might notice right in the northern side of the zone is going to be Dark Zero. We saw their rotate a little bit earlier on. Complexity, no surprise to see they're in a pretty good spot as well. As TSM decide, it's time for us to try and take a little bit of space on the map and get across it towards where this zone is going to be. Everett Tower goes down. They want to try and play for the high ground in and around. Epicenter for now, but they're quite going to make it. Maybe they'll just uh, decide to just get a little bit more distance on this travel through the skies before they do try and do anything. I was interested to see if they were actually going to go into Monument and hit the uh, the ring console to try and get that third beacon information, but I think from where they can see at the moment, they're pretty comfortable in where they believe it's going to be going. It's, for them, it's not about a priority spot at this point, Dan. I think it's just about fighting their way in. Yeah, something that TSM do very well and they're very successful at doing and have done today as well. In sixth place at the moment, we saw a few north to south rotates on storm point where it's very similar where they had to move in late adapt to wherever that zone was pulling and it, it did work out for them at times as we get our first caustic of the lobby we saw this in amir as well we saw one caustic and it was very successful as well so we'll have to see whether dno can find equal success shout out to cybercats team over in uh, emir who did do some good work today with caustic in their composition prove that it is still viable I believe he's now playing the bridge uh, position here just to the south of Climatizer. FaZe, I believe, have managed to get back to a full three here. So they collected that banner and they were able to get a respawn against Zera Tricky back in. So FaZe are going to be maybe in a position where they might be looking at Oblivion in quite some time. DNO Gaming is still continuing their rotation as well as we take our attention back towards the height which is surrounding Epicenter for now. You can see the temper on that bridge. That's all of the teams who are trying to kind of duke at each other at the moment. You saw FaZe just in the background for a few moments as TSM continue on their path forward. And the height is always a good place to play, but this is start, going to start to get a little bit busy as TSM move down and have to slide and work their way around towards Survey Camp. Just to touch on Caustic again, obviously, being a controller legend, you do get the ring console information through Caustic, so a very viable pick with there only being four legends who can scan ring consoles. They are all so vital to any composition, but especially on World's Edge, where it can be a very building-heavy final circle or at least a building-heavy built-up area, the Caustic can really play a factor in those late games, so I'm not surprised that we're seeing a couple start to creep through and uh, really can make a difference in the, in those late games. So we'll have to see whether it can be the same here in North America as it was in EMEA. As Zone 2 beginning to close, most teams have been able to find their way into somewhere comfortable to play. It's only Oxygen and Optic who are not inside the circle right now. I can guarantee there's going to... Oh, wait. Did that get stolen off the package? By a Loba team in the vicinity? What, the, the gun did? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Reps just dropped his gun to try and pick up the care package weapon and there was nothing on it. I mean, we do have three Lobas. Who knows? 
I have to look back at that one on the VOD to see what happened, but there was nothing in there. I don't know if he was maybe just looking to collect the last pieces, and maybe someone had collected it a little bit earlier, but the way it was dropped his gun, it was almost as if he expected there to be a weapon there for him to pick it up, but Optic Gaming moving their way through Monument at the moment. They're going to be kind of mirroring the moves of GKS at the moment. Auction Esports also in the vicinity, but Dark Zero, who moved into this position on the tracks, are looking to make it their own once more, and Gem Burn with the R9 does damage it's no surprise to see it anymore if you haven't seen what happens in these situations get to know it this is a big fight for all of these teams on the northern side because this is going to be one of the better positions for the end game again we saw something similar in emia where it was the northern rocks that ended up being absolutely vital to finding a victory and it looks like dark zero have been able to force teams away from them even forcing ssg back as well of course old teammate zanyu going up against them the new roster, though, or the new organization finding themselves on SSG. By the way, I know we've said it, but it's great to have SSG back. And I, I'm really excited to see them be involved <laughs> once more. It's purely selfish. They're just, they're just nice people. Just great guys. By the way, got confirmation as we see Optics trying to move up onto Sky here that the crane was stolen away by a Loba. And it was uh, Ape Gang and Dan Matic who stole it away. So Reps had Christmas ruined. Down. That's one thing, to be able to ruin Christmas in February, it's a very special skill, it has to be said. Oh, Only a few can do it. In December, don't worry about it. Still remembers it. <laughs> On his Santa wish list, he starts thinking about, all right, can I get a Kraber this time? Because I got it stolen from me in February. As Skirt are going to be making their way on the western side here. So I'm looking at the west. There is a potential that Skirt could go through the train tracks and find themselves on the western side and maybe force their way into a building. But again, that's going to be a pretty treacherous journey. If they had a little bit more time, they could go far north, just echoing the same kind of rotation we saw from Dark Zero. And there is playable space on the northwest, but I don't know if Skirt are going to have enough time to get there. I do want to point out that, by the way, the kill feed was interesting because we were like laughing and joking about how Reps had his Kraber stolen. They just killed him. They just killed Ape Gang, at least two of them. And I'm pretty sure that Reps is going to be able to find a Kraber on one of those bodies. So maybe Christmas came early for Reps. Who knows? We'll have to find out in a few moments. But that is where the zone is going to be going. And look at Dark Zero, the only team with all of their toads inside of it. I mean, Dark Zero have done so well. Remember, Complexity held that spot. Dark Zero then pressured them, forced Complexity away. And now they're in prime position here as the circle continues to pull to them. Now, if we are able to see the Caustic team get anywhere near those train tracks, it could be incredible for them as TSM lose one. Reps goes down. Reps goes down, doesn't get his Kraber to play with. How with the spray, doesn't get the kill himself. But GKS will lose the fight, and it's Verholz who manages to clutch up in that situation, but needs to get away, needs to survive. And with 17 squads still alive in the lobby, he's not on MK, but he's still so showing that he can move. Some movement as LG and Optic and Skirt were all looking towards TSM. Even Oxygen, I think, were having a pop. Uh, but for Verholst, it's going to be a case of just trying to survive here. There is a potential that maybe there's enough gunfire that he could go back and get a res, albeit unlikely. Still a possibility that has to be considered. Never mind. Uh, Reps goes down. Yeah, Reps is finished off. Onto gaming, looking to move in on the loot as well. There's so much for them to play with in this situation. They've already got the big mod weapons as well. You saw Gold R99. You see the 301 fully kitted as well. So Optic Gaming are going to be looted up to their eyeballs. I think that is a saying which I just created. But you get the point, everyone, okay? Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, that's uh, both concerning and playing a very mental and picture I'm in my head at the same time. You so much exactly loot. I mean. yep. And it's all there. Oxygen, first place at the moment in the overalls. 43 points. And looking to try and make it even more here on World's Edge. But they still have to move north. Uh, LG are going to be taking the rock to their north. And I think Oxygen may have just seen that happen. But it's going to still be Dark Zero, the only team actually in the, the next next circle. As Optic also being pressured. All these teams that are outside of the circle are thinking, we have to fight now. This is our chance to get points. Skill K7 and dodge and dive through that dark veil. Not going to be able to do so. And even though they were looted up to their eyeballs, the question is, are they going to be able to survive to use it? Dropped survives for now, but will go down. Skirt eliminated in the meantime. Flat go down. Optic will fall as well as the zone starts to force these fights. Everybody is having to get involved in Eternal. We just two are trying to sneak around all of this carnage that's going down. Oh, what a shame for Flat. Almost getting into top 15. Almost getting one placement point as a solo. But sadly, 16th is the position that they will finish in. Now, EA having a look over towards Native. Remember, Native who moved very early, as did EA over.
over towards survey camp here. But have they been able to do damage to get those armors up? As phase are back up to a three, but that three could become two. No, they just about squeeze into the circle away from the zone. Oh, good shots coming in from Snipe down, but do they have time to heal here? They can drop down to the low ground for now, but they're not sure that they know there's another team on the other side of this wall. Snipe down is going to look across. He's going to find there's not just one team, but maybe there's two. Snipe down now left on his own. Has to try and poke and prod. Has to try and play for KP in this situation, but FaZe will fall. Complexity also eliminated. And remember, they were the team who dropped in the POI where we're expecting to see this game pretty much end at survey camp. So SSG in a great spot, though. LG moving to take down the final players of eternal native gaming eliminated in the meantime and we are down to just eight as lg come under fire as well come under fire with the havoc starts to go burr and they just about survive sweet though looks like they'll be joined by oxygen who come in to clean up the pieces and get the kp all the meanwhile verho still alive for tsm as you mentioned ssg in an excellent spot dark zero and ssg are two favorites here in this match now for sure with the positions they hold whereas oxygen elevate drop in and the remainders of tsm are going to be all on the southern side here crazy that Verhulst has managed to stay alive long enough to get into the placement points into the top six. Elevate still alive. Great performance from them on Storm Point as well. We saw them with that second place a little bit earlier on and now we're going to have to see if they can continue oh, wow. to do it. But this is the big fight. This could be a game defining fight. It's Dark Zero taking on SSG and the beast of the hunt has been popped. I mean, this could have been the fight and may still well be the final fight of the match if they decide just to back off from one another here. But there was certainly some damage that was done that led to that engagement happening where either team thought that they had a chance to maybe eliminate that team nice and early which would probably guarantee the win it has to be said tsm do get wiped out as we get to our last five now dark zero elevate oxygen dropping gaming and ssg two wingmans in the lobby and I'm pretty sure neither of them in the hands of Dark Zero, so they have to be extremely careful and take advantage of any third-party opportunities. Dropping gaming down, elevate gaming down as well as the Rock, the God Rock, is going to be what they try and play for for now. But Oxygen have moved up to it. They've taken the height off of them. Yeah, Oxygen giving themselves a chance in this game. Remember, our lobby leaders at the moment will be looking down from above. Dark Zero down just below them. And SSG have been able to wrestle the kind of train car away from Dark Zero and arguably hold the best spot in the game now, right now to SSG. Oxygen is going to have a lot of eyes on them. And in a three versus three versus three like this, you don't really want eyes on you. You want to try and go unnoticed. You want to try and be able to just creep in and be the last team to enter the engagement. That's what we always say. Dark Zero and SSG certainly know about each other. If they've both become aware of Oxygen, there is a chance that they could kind of team up a little bit here, destroy Oxygen, and then take the, the separate 3v3. Every time I see the word Sykes, by the way, I just hear it in the scream, the bellow of Sykes! Zero. Sykes! It's crazy, but we'll have to see if that's going to be the case. Or if he's going to be congratulating his teammate on a job, well done. Oxygen Esports with Digi Threats. They also had a wingman, remember, which can cause so much damage. We've seen the problems the weapon can cause. And having that in the back pocket is enough to stop everybody trying to take any kind of space and move it. SSG trying to make sure they've got armor swaps out as well so that if they get pushed, they take damage, they can re-engage in the fight as quickly as possible. But the fact that there's cover for two of these teams kind of yep. takes Bangalore out of things for just a, a little bit more than you expect on a, on a map like Stormpoint, for example, where that Rolling Thunder can really cause damage. I think Dark Zero have to move first here as well. So this is dangerous for Dark Zero, but could be dangerous for SSG because the only way Dark Zero can go is towards SSG. And they send it. This is great news for Oxygen. Oxygen, good news, but also good news for SSG because Oxygen are doing damage to Dark Zero as they cross. So SSG are going to have a much easier fight than it might be. Ah. Previously, and, then, and Jim Byrne gets one knock himself. Reed sets down the wall, and now surely this is about cleaning up the re remaining parts of SSG. But remember, they did have some shield swaps, but Reed has got that wingman. It's a three versus two. Vayne's taking a lot of damage, but they should still be able to get things done, you'd imagine, especially with Conduit helping out as Oxygen continue to dominate the lobby. From south to north, they find their way into the final circle, and they just had to wait for Dark Zero to cross, add that damage, and they get the victory. What a difference a couple of weeks makes, right? Oxygen wow. changing back POI to Barometer. Get a little bit of confidence under their belt with the old faithful on Storm Point and now come through with a win here on World's Edge as well. Just looking like the team I was excited to watch coming into this season. Uh, you know, going into the ALGS Championships last year, I think a lot of talk was about Oxygen maybe being a dark horse to win the whole thing. It wasn't to be, but 
everybody had them on that kind of conversation loop and on that pedestal as a team who might be another one to break out in future. So I think Oxygen, this is what we expected to see from you. And this is what we wanted to see from you. And Dan, they're showing that this isn't a team who was a, a one season wonder. This is a team of putting the work and are really showing they can be up there when it comes to the end of the season. Yeah, great call from you. You mentioned it at the start of the show, how this could be a week to keep an eye on Oxygen. I'll allow you to take a quick break as I bring Stella back into the fray. Stella, I mean, Oxygen continue to be at the very top of our lobby and continue to impress us no matter what map they find themselves on. I know, it's impressive. They really set themselves up for success there. I mean, either way, SSG or Dark Zero were bound to look at each other and I mean, they kind of just knew Oxygen was going to win. They were in the superior positioning. Those train cars really don't give you much cover. And when you know that there's a team just looking down at you, getting pot shots, and it's, it, you know it's kind of over. But they did the best that they could, and Oxygen has been great with positioning, especially in World's Edge. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the, the fact they were able to force their way through zone and find themselves from the south side all the way to the north side, I think they'll be extremely happy with it being able to do that but i think my concern was when they saw the two teams on that northern side they were a little bit worried that maybe they were too late to the party but the fact that dark zero got forced to the northwest ssg doing so well with their opening damage to kind of force dark zero back especially after dark zero had been doing that to every other team in the lobby prior <laughs> it just allowed oxygen to kind of take that high ground and say okay we don't have to move first here we know dark zero have to move first let's just be patient and be patient excuse me and as we've already mentioned today whether it be amir whether it be na patience is a virtue it has helped so many teams find victories here today it really is and knowing when to pick your fights was huge for oxygen there i mean they chose to take god rock which was a great call and i think dark zero knew immediately at that moment they're like oh, well um guess we just go forward and there's not much you can do from there now unfortunately we did see phase actually be able to play the game this time but it was unfortunate they did get taken out kind of early in mid game because they just weren't able to get that rotation early we also saw that there was elevate and drop in lagging on the edge of circle which inevitably did have them eliminated from the match so there's a lot of rotations that people have to get on top of because when you, if you don't have that ring console knowledge it is kind of detrimental to you yeah, and even though it's one of those circles that's a little bit more predictable without ring console knowledge, it's not a fun circle to play for any team that has to approach really too far from the south because fighting through Epicenter, no one enjoys a lot of kind of open areas that you're going to have to try and burst through if you don't have a catalyst to give you that cover or if you've run out of your ultimate, don't have your ultimate to use, then you are going to find yourself very vulnerable indeed. Uh, small shout out to the teams who were able to wrap their way to kind of higher placements. I think TSM were able to push themselves a little bit further. Verholst uh, saw his team teammates go down a little bit earlier but still was able to push himself into sixth place the same could be said for gg or flat i'll give them a shout out as a, a solo player sadly two players uh being disconnected due to the weather issues in north america at the moment it's, it's in la right there's still it's where you are how are you still on air how are you still <laughs> i don't know you disconnected I I I, stop 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 <laughs> i think i, I swear I, I i keep getting notifications on my phone that there's like a storm warning it's like oh it'll stop raining now no 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 i mean now so i keep getting notifications and i was a little worried but um yeah it, it is in california i think la is getting hit but it's the bay area that's been hit pretty hard so mm. kimchi is actually playing out of his friend's house right now um he sent me a picture of his current setup and it's like the most bare bones setup and the fact that they were able to win a match like that is incredible i don't know about you but i'm pretty much a little diva when it comes to my setup i have to have my mouse my keyboard otherwise i'm, I'm like you know what it's it, it's not gonna work for me yeah, I mean, there's so many teams that try and replicate the setup of LAN, like whether it be the same monitor that is going to be used, for example, just so that they can get a feel for it. So it doesn't surprise me that people would struggle, but apparently not complexity. Anyway, series results sounds like they are ready. Uh, let's take a look, Stella. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, Oxygen Esports looking great with 31 kills. My goodness, and 68 total points today. SSG not too far behind, but almost half the kills. And Dark Zero, of course, is, has 23 kills, but is in third place. I, what do you make of this? I mean, Dark Zero are just uh, an incredible fighting team, and they do put themselves in the position where they can pick up KP 
if placement isn't available to them, so it doesn't entirely surprise me, but it is all about Oxygen and SSG as the leading two right now. Um, elsewhere, the middle of the pack is going to start looking similar to what we saw in Amiya earlier, where a victory could change everything for you and could really elevate you into a position where you can start to look down on those who are going to be in that chasing pack. Two games remaining, so there is certainly still an opportunity for some of these squads to make a name for themselves. It's starting to look a little bit dire for the likes of Skirt and the likes of FaZe down at the bottom, but if they can get it going in matches five and six, there is still a chance they can push themselves into not just the top 10, but you can still think about top five here. It is definitely doable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even LG in the, on the second page of that roster, I mean, I think they can still make it up as well. They've been having, I think you said it, they've been having a quieter game today, and I don't know what's going on. It could be something, you know, maybe not cohesive with the team today. It could be a lot of different things, but I'm, I'm curious. I want to pick your brain on what you think could be going through their heads right now. Honestly, with a battle royale, sometimes it is just going to come down to, did you get a ring console? Did the zone pull your way? How's the weather? Apparently, is going to affect us <laughs> Not today. Good. It's uh, <laughs> it's just one of those days, it seems like, for LG. But again, as I say, with matches five and six still around the corner, it's not the end of the world. The lobby is close enough in the mid game or the mid table that they can still make a name for themselves. They can still push their way in. So I would just put it down to, you know, a couple of bad zones, maybe a bad call here or there. It's tough to say without actually seeing from their point of view. But if anyone can come back in and show us what they're made of in the late game, we know it's LG. They always do it. Yeah, absolutely. I was actually looking back at my notes and yeah, the zone pools today have been pretty rough. I mean, I think we did see a few of the players talking about, oh, there's scrim circles. So it's, it's a little rough and... I think that's the thing about Apex, though. You have to be prepared for every single scenario that could happen, which is difficult. But that's why they're pro players, right? So hopefully they're ready for the next circle and hopefully it isn't rough. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the next match ready for you.
Four games down, two to go here in the ALGS in the North America region. The Pro League is certainly hotting up, and this is very similar to what we saw a little bit earlier, Dan. Like you mentioned in EMEA, the top team, Oxygen, have kind of separated themselves a little bit, but for the rest of the lobby, it's so close that things can change in just one match. Yeah, and then Oxygen are going to continue to separate themselves with games like that. 14 kills alongside the victory is going to create a gap, no matter how well anyone else is performing. SSG find themselves on 15 points with a second place finish in Dark Zero on 11. And then the kind of mid table, everyone kind of sharing points because teams are still finding kills, even if they're not placing particularly well. So it is going to be very interesting as we get towards match five and six here about which teams can start to really push themselves forward. Well, it's an opportunity to do so right now in match number five. Only two to go, and we have flown through the matches today, and we're going to continue on World's Edge, of course, for these final two matches. And I'm looking like I'm looking at teams like FaZe, because they've had a little bit of a rough day so far. Uh, day number one for them was, I would say, about as good as you could have expected, not only from a new team, but they were obviously splitting a POI in that game, in that game day number one. Game day number two was a concern for me, because they really did fall off a little bit. And now I'm looking at these last two games as... How are we kind of going to judge this phase lineup, right? Because it's been slow so far. There hasn't been too many good moments for them outside of maybe winning that contesting game number one. So now is a chance for them to shine. And they need to because the points, they're still there to be picked up. And if they can, then all of a sudden, a bit of a shaky and bad looking day can turn into a pretty good one. Yeah, I think the match five has to be a good one here for phase. The same could be said for Skur after the troubles that they found themselves in let's put it that way in storm point and then it not really being rectified in the early stages of world's edge but we're into legend select then and that means we are very close to match five now we did think that we had another revenant i don't know if i'm gonna believe it maybe abrilelli just hovered it for long enough and that he switched over to horizon afterwards he knows how to manipulate the api that's what it is Abrilelli yeah, just really Smart wants guy. to throw a spanner in the works uh, all right well Dropship is locked, it's loaded, and we'll have to see whether we do get the early fight that we saw last time as well. Two games to go. Game number five is live. Where is the ring going to be taking us and who is going to have the information about where it's going to be going first? Pretty good uh, dropship. You can see straight down the middle of World's Edge here. Start off on the southern side, so a little bit of an advantage for those on their loop path and how quickly they can start their rotate. But just looking over ring consoles early here and just trying, trying to see if we can pick anything up. Guys, that is going to have one and that's going to be FaZe, of course, who do drop over there and move their way through. So I was keep my eyes on that just to see if they do get a little bit of info and FaZe will have that information. So there's an opportunity for them to move quick. SSG also have a ring console to work with at Climatizer. Elevate have one to work with. LG are going to have one at Lava Fisher. So Lava Fisher and Countdown both have them. Even drop-in gaming at Landslide. So a lot of the kind of more central POIs or close to central like Landslide are going to have the ability to at least get that ring console information, which is going to be needed because we're going back towards Epicenter and Survey Camp. This time it's not going to be as north as it was prior. It is going to be more the surrounding areas of Epicenter that we're going to start to see teams reside. Yeah, this could be pulling up towards the Hill House, potentially, or maybe over towards the uh, the bins, I would say, just kind of between the uh, the station and Epicenter itself. It's an interesting one, and maybe one of those one of those zones, again, that you're playing for Ring 3 on, because it's a little bit tough to judge where that one is going to be ending, especially with it in the back of your mind that we have seen a few funky Ring Balls, not only on Storm Point, but World's Edge as well. So let's see how our teams manage this one, because this is the kind of zone that gets me interested, because it's like... I don't think anyone's got a hard read on where it's going to be going unless they get that Zone 3 info. Yeah, I think it's going to be another difficult one because, as I mentioned in the post game, uh, rotating through Epicenter isn't enjoyable for anybody, except maybe the team that has some high ground to work with. There's just so many ups and downs, so many difficult fights that you have to take, a lot of open ground as well that you'll find yourself in when you think you're safe and you slide around a corner and there's a team just waiting for you because everyone has enough playable area where they can kind of be in a congested space in Epicenter, but they're not really enough playable area to do anything with. So it's going to be another circle that's frustrating one, I'd say, for those who are rotating a little bit later. Oh my goodness. I think that Lou was trying to use that balloon, by the way, to see what SSG were doing. I think he could see that they hit a ring console on the map overhead and he was trying to use that to see where their rotate was going to be, but he just gave it a little bit too much juice and he just guaranteed an easy kill to ssg so what might have been a little bit of a 200 iq play has ended up kind of putting his team on the back foot here 
And I'm all for, you know, taking risks, trying to gain information, but, uh, you know, sometimes you are going to take a risk and you're going to be punished for it. And that is a freebie for SSG, and they'll be delighted with it. And I mean, especially going up against Zainu, he's not going to miss, right? We know what he can do. He's a land champion. He is a fantastic player and is going to punish you if you do make any sort of step out of line. So Complexity are going to have to work as a two or work to try and get that third player back on their feet as everyone now is starting to head heavily towards Epicenter. It's already clogged up like a block drain and someone's going to have to try and unplug it. I wonder, wonder, wondered how you were going to finish that sentence, I have to say. Anyway, TSM, they're going to be taking a much different approach to things. They're going to be moving through the Vault Tunnel at the moment. On the uh, Geyser side of things, they're going to be shadowing what FaZe are doing at the moment. So of all the teams, I think that you want to maybe be avoiding a fight if you phase right now. TSM are probably pretty high up that list. Complexity, though, somehow got Lou back into it. That's the ability and the upside of having a support legend. You can craft that banner. You can get that player back in. You just need a, either a mobile resi or, of course, just a res that is going to be there and waiting for you. And now Complexity can try and take this fight if they want. As Cream are very nearby and potentially vulnerable because you can see the amount of damage they've already taken. But I don't think Complexity are going to push up on this because they're well aware of how close SSG were uh, based off what had happened earlier. Yeah, the, the, the last thing they want to going to wants to have happen right now is for one of them to go down and be finished again because the uh, the map beacon has been used to get that respawn in and they're not going to be able to do that again quite as easily. LG though. A little bit rough looking for them at the moment on their rotate. Not the armors you really want. They're going to have to play for height and poke damage. A lot of people seem to be betting in and around survey camp as well, but there's a lot of people playing in and around Epicenter at the moment on kind of some of the hilly areas. And I think that's a good indication to hark back to what we were saying at the start of this game, right? I don't think anyone is 100% convinced on where this zone is going to be playing. And again, look at that map overhead. I think that gives you a pretty good indication of exactly that zone three info might be vital to teams yeah so i wonder whether teams like dark zero might just wait and hit that ring console once more gks can do the same after going from thermal up to staging skirt can do it at harvester and optic can do the same thing at geyser so we are seeing you know our main edge teams here who probably would have the ability to do it anyway but they're going to learn a lot of information which the teams who have already moved are not going to have access to. So that will give them the opportunity to potentially dive in late and find playable space of where maybe someone hasn't predicted if the zone pulls in a certain way. We're native at the moment. They're kind of trying to, I would say, defend the ring console. It always feels on this uh, central platform in Mon Monument. They're going to have a line of sight onto it. They're also more than aware that there's a team underneath them at the moment. So they've got to be very careful on how they do try and move. It's going to be Eternal who are very close and over at Fragment itself are TSM. So if they see this breaking out and they see a few knocks going down, then they'll be more than happy to try and maybe move in and clean up these pieces. He's claimed there were some nice shots with that flat line. Control that recoil beautifully to make sure that he breaks those shields. It's going to be a bit sticky if uh, either of these teams do decide to send it on one another because TSM also just around the corner. At the moment, they're just in a building, but Native have to be aware of that and shouldn't try and commit too heavily. A Dark Veil was had to be used just to try and stay alive. But I do wonder whether maybe Skirt could play a part. I'm just watching the map overhead and Skirt didn't stay towards Harvester. Instead, they started to move into Fragment. Potentially, they are thinking about this ring console at Monument like the other few squads are as well. And now is your opportunity. Now is your chance to start hitting those ring consoles if you had them available to you. Optic definitely are doing so. As you can see on the map overhead, Dark Zero chose not to and GKS will be able to do as well at Harvester. And Oxygen can do it at Landslide. Yeah, it does look like the Hill House, where we were thinking in the north side, is going to be prime position. And that's where SSG picked up that first kill onto Complexity. And that's where they're going to be sitting for this game. So an opportunity for SSG, who are in second place overall, to maybe try and cut down that lead that Oxygen have already managed to establish. So a big opportunity for SSG, of course, playing under the SSG banner. If you're watching for the first game today and you're wondering who's SSG, form a PLP. So PLP become SSG. Simple. And I mean, it makes sense for SSG, right? You pick up a team that has a former LAN champion on it. There's not too many of them in Apex Legends, so take advantage of the ones that are available as TSM get a knock. They're not going to send it, but they might be able to pick up a little bit of KP, especially with the black hole being tossed towards them. That kill has been secured. You see Verhulst gets the finish. 
Eternal do lose one player, and now TSM are just worried about their backs for a second, and why wouldn't you be? Because Skirt have moved up, and Skirt are inside the train station themselves. There's going to be a smoke that goes down, but Skurry gets ripped down. Abalelli gets taken down, and Skurry with barely any HP less has to be very careful here because it's the havoc of Verholst that is causing the problems for them. They were just a split second too late on the Conduit queue. But TSM taking this fight. Let's jump into the comms and see what they're saying. Okay. Nice. I'm getting shot in the house. Smoking us, smoking us. I'm getting I'm getting I'm good where I'm at. I got, I, got, I got a kid in the back. We're still inside, I think. I'm here, I'm here inside. I can peek middle in a second. Cell. Come inside. I can't cross. Can you, can you come to me, Evan? You need to yep. play for res. You need to wall or play for res or something. I'm walling for res. They ran away, they ran away, they ran away. I'm playing I'm res. Yep. There's a duo on both sides. Drop any armor, Jordan, take this. Okay. Right here. Managed to get reps back to his feet. The shot's coming in from distance, and that's something that's always... Something you've got to keep your eye on in those fights, Dan. It's one line of sight, one bullet from a 30-30, and all of a sudden you feel like you're in a clean fight, but it becomes a little bit messy, a little bit more awkward, just because you weren't paying attention to that LOS. Now, TSM did do well to stabilize and make sure they are still going to be a full three. Now, GKS, who were able to get that extra ring information, are starting to move from the southwest here, and they're being kind of shadowed by Oxygen, who again got that ring console information. So both thinking similar ways and similar plans of action right now, and I wonder if Oxygen can do the unthinkable and go back to back to back and find another victory, especially, again, in a very disadvantageous circle that they're still going to be able to try and find their way through. It's very early doors, though. They did well in the previous game, but we'll have to see whether they can find the same kind of success here in match five. If they win another game as well, they get the paper mache trophy that I send into their uh, their letterbox saying... Well, they have to win, they have to win four games, right? Well, they, but it was three and then... It's, it's above additional. 50%. Oh, okay. As long as it's above 50%. So the fourth win, you would then get a bonus point, and then for every win after, you would get a bonus point as well. Good. Thank goodness you're here when it comes to maths. Honestly, I know I say it a lot, but I am thick as two planks when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's always uh, a 1% chance I could be wrong as well. So, you know, we have to just bear that in mind. Uh, but I think my memory might serve me right now. Eternal, they are holding themselves with a position. Actually, GKS and Oxygen got past Eternal. I thought Eternal were going to hold them both out, but Eternal stayed in their building. So it just allowed people to rotate as uh, Dropping Gaming are our first team to be eliminated here. We finally lose a squad. Prowler in the hands of Jim Burton. He's given the DG over to his teammate on the Bangalore, though, just to make sure that those smokes are as effective as possible. But I'm going to be honest with you, if you're Jim Burton, you don't really need it. If you get a line of science or player with this gun, you're going to do damage. Optic Gaming eliminated, and Zero gets the knock on to Reed. So now you're going to see Dark Zero taking on the last two remember, remaining players from Oxygen, trying to clean up that damage. Zero will get one. Oxygen eliminated. We will not see them get a bonus point today. And it will allow teams to start to try and catch up with the lobby leaders now with them being eliminated so early. Especially a team like Dark Zero, who isn't too far behind. Especially with a victory here, they could close that gap, gap and then some. Now, LG, kind of central zone right now. But th these are the kind of horrible areas that I was talking about a little bit earlier with Epicenter, right? You've got playable space, but at the same time, if you are forced out of the area, or if nades, or if a fuse, or if anyone kind of makes you move, you are moving into nothingness. It is such little room and such little playable space to work with that you really don't have a plan B when you commit to certain areas. Yeah, very, very tough. And like I mentioned, not a lot of teams playing Watson, if any, in this lobby at the moment, which means that grenades become devastating in those kind of positions if you hit one nice frag grenade one nice thermite i mean we saw the thermite that took optic gaming down a little bit earlier on one thermite grenade pretty much took down all three of them or certainly stripped in away enough shields and damage for the cleanups to be very very simple and i wonder if that's something we're going to see a little bit more frequently watson picks as we move through north america in the weeks coming oblivion though stuck under the bridge at the moment kind of safe kind of not safe and it's another example of one of these spots which we would say is playable but not comfortable yeah no one's really enjoying it out of these three and i imagine comms are very hectic at the moment but they are making it work that's important Speaking of making it work, can FaZe make something work here on this bridge? Not in where Pandas currently resides, but of course he can join his teammates and they can hold the kind of northern tip of the bridge. Did they spot out the team below them? That's the Did he even see them there? I, I hope he did. I'm not sure he did, maybe. In all honesty, I hope he did. I don't think he did though, it's skirt, skirting along the uh, edges of the zone. I think Snipedown's just in, surely. Take the sunglasses off, Faze. 
Yeah, FaZe just so hellbent on, I think, avoiding damage and worrying about the teams that were potentially north of them that they didn't really catch the team going below them. Which isn't really too much of an issue for FaZe at the moment, but could be an issue later on, depending on where that team were to end up. 17 squads remain. Clane's just gone down for native, so there is a chance that we could see another fight breaking out. But you can see Skirt have made their way into the silos. And, you know, it could prove to be an issue for FaZe as they try and escape here. I mean, the only thing I can think, maybe FaZe saw them and just thought, hey, we can let them go past, hope that they yeah. engage with the team underneath, and then we third party it. Sometimes that is a call that is made. But for me, it just looked like an opportunity for some free KP. If they would have seen it, a couple of players can look down and... Two guns equals one kill very, very quickly. Jim Burton, though, he's got to be worried about being in a kill himself at the moment. He's going to have to take a few seconds extra than normal to pop that Phoenix kit. And now FaZe are going to make their move. They are going to drop down. It looks like they're going to be winning a few fights as well. A couple of cleanups going to come in. Should be able to finish off a few more kills as well. And you can see Zeratricky is going to get one. Phony's going to move in for a few more as well. And FaZe, maybe this is their moment. Maybe this is where the Phoenix starts to at least raise its wings up a little bit. I was going to say, it has to be this game, really, for FaZe. I mean, sure, you can go into match six and hope for a, a big pop-off game, but you don't want to leave yourself in that spot. You want to be able to try and do as much here as possible when the armor looks good, the weapons look good, the positioning looks okay. I mean, FaZe are going to have to go through a lot of teams here. They do have an evac tower to work with, so they can try and just try and dive over everyone, but... If they force them web their way through, they're potentially just going to end up in what is a blender of Epicenter at the moment. Keep an eye on this kill feed in the next 35 seconds. It's about to pop off. Yeah, it's about to go uh, wacky mode, which is a technical term that was used in Apex Legends. Uh, is there a tricky trying to move in, though? He's got the uh, the Digi threat, and he's doing some good damage. His teammates are backing him up as well. The Digi threat could be the Digi difference at the moment, but he's got to be careful because he isn't aware that his teammates are taking damage and FaZe will go down as they try and force their way in towards zone. A couple of other teams did fall as well. TSM are going to be playing the scaffolding, which is around the beacon. And now they're going to be engaging with SSG, who have to move down from that hill house. Skirt eliminated, A gang eliminated as well. And you're right, keep your eyes on the kill feed, because if you don't, you're going to miss a lot of teams falling. Oblivion go as well. TSM go And well. TSM. Maybe even SSG could be next. Nine squads remain. We had 16 just mere moments ago. And it looks like it's about to turn into eight once more as Flat also get eliminated. Flat, who actually were able to play as a full three in this game, by the way. They were able to get their internet back on, so very happy that they got to play Apex Legends. Now, Dark Zero being pushed by GK. Yes. Are they going to be able to actually do the damage? The initial damage is great, and the vault slays through. Stay naughty, staying naughty. I mean, that's the one thing, right? Dark Zero just had a fight, and you would imagine they used a lot of utility in that fight. Sykes is going to go down. Zero and Jim Burton do get out of there, though, but E8 are just around the corner. This is such a treacherous zone for everyone to have to play. You quite rightly, brilliantly put it, there's playable spots, but there is no comfortable spot for anyone at the moment, and Dark Zero is showing just that. Yeah, and it becomes even worse as you get further into this next circle because there is literally nowhere to hide for some of these squads if they are forced out into open area. Dark Zero is still a two, though. Still fighting, still pressing, and still a big threat in this lobby regardless. LG struggling, SSG get wiped out, and we're down to seven squads now as Elevate, I think, have spotted out Dark Zero's remaining squad. Yeah, Jim Burton's going to go down. Zero is going to be left on his own, and you would imagine they would swing as a three to try and clean that one up. LG still alive and looking down on the team who are trying to cross below them at the moment, but there's someone very close to them as well. LG, who are two white armors and a blue, I think, when they start this game. Well, now they've got two reds and a purple. Things are looking up stonks for LG when it comes to shields, but can they find KP off the back of this? Slayer just getting those oh meds back God. up. Oh, 138 from Sweet. The Vault just absolutely shredding. And LG should be able to press this advantage, should be able to get the wipe, and they will as Cream eliminated. But now Dark Zero's remaining player is going to take a look at this. Can Zero be a nuisance here to LG? Looks like it's not going to be the case. LG are able to escape. I mean, the fact that Zero is still in this game on the Bangalore is impressive itself enough. Complexity will fall as well. They're into the top six. Sweet now flies forward, trying to death ball the team behind these rocks. Funk's trying to back him up, but it looks like this will be the end for LG. Dark Zero fall as well, so now we get to a little bit of calm as everybody is surviving for now. E8, in my opinion, the team to watch. They are within striking distance of some of those top spots, and I think with the walk-in that they have and the fact that they have more cover in this zone than most, might be in a position to win this game. Yeah, we have to start looking at who has to move first and 
likely who it is. It's DNO, who might be targeted. And if they're not targeted, then they have to make a decision of who do they try and jump on. Oh, that's a good amount of damage, though. Have to be careful if you're elevated here. You don't want to invite any sort of pressure. Just wait. Maybe do a little bit of pop damage yourself onto another team to try and encourage that third squad to push. They'll certainly be aware of where those teams currently are. Maybe less so about GKS. They've certainly got eyes on DNO. I mean, this is going to be a tough one. Look at the high ground that is available for Elevate. GKS also have some to work with, too. Oh, he's only got 30 bullets or so to work with, though. That's one issue that might rear its head. Although he does have his teammate Sorcerer, who does have 190 bullets. Thank you. <laughs> Just to make that a little bit less awkward than it needed to be. But one thing that's interesting is that uh, DNA do have a Valkyrie by the looks of things. Ah, uh, DNA going this way. Coming in. So they look like they want to take the fight against E8 and they get the better of them as well. They should just open the door surely for GKS. Yeah, they should be able to clean things up if the damage is done in the right way and they time it correctly. And what a nade that is. The Arkstar does the damage. DNA go out. And now it's just about mopping up the pieces here. Shoot me. Last alive. You're a good player, Shubi, but 3v1 is odds that even you can't overcome. It will be GKS who win the fifth game of the day. And again, it's just, as we always see in Apex Legends, the team that has to move first often make that difficult call of do we try and play for second place? The Dark Veil comes down, they full send it. Sadly, doesn't go their way, but it always opens up to the team who's able to be fighting last. I know it's a tale as old as time with Apex Legend, but sometimes it is as simple as that. Be the last team to enter the engagement. Well, Dan, take a few seconds, my friend. Get your breath okay. back. Prepare for game number six. It's uh, a time for to bring Stella back in before we get the game underway for uh, for the last one of the day. Stella, welcome back. It's uh, yeah. I always enjoy, by the way, I will say, <laughs> sending Dan away. I don't know what it is about it, just dismissing him. I'm like, go, Dan, <laughs> leave. Shoo shoo, we're done. Exactly. <laughs> but come back, please, Dan. I need you. I can't count. Yes, yes. <laughs> it was, man, these matches have been incredible to watch today. I mean, they're, they're also a little bit heartbreaking to see the circles pull and see teams struggling to get there. Epicenter is a horrible last circle. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. But, I mean, GKS did so well at playing that high ground. And, again, like you were saying, it kind of wrote itself. Anyone's move there was definitely going to be their last, and GKS just swept in and cleaned up the pieces. Yeah, I think, to be honest with you, EA, from the position they were in, they had a good spot, but when DNO decided that they were just going to try and fight for second, they won that fight having had the first player go down. So I think they'll be pretty happy, actually, to get the extra KP and secure second place. It was a very simple, of course, job for GKS at the end of it just to clean the final pieces up, but... That, that zone is tough. That That is a really, really tough zone. And we've seen a few of them so far today that have just pulled out into the open ground where you, you look at a composition that you'd pick maybe in an open ground and you go, oh, I wish we had a Gibby or something like that. But it's just, you, you know, you can't predict these things. Yeah, absolutely. And look at Elevate. I mean, like you said, yeah, they wanted to get the extra KP and they did. And they tied the GKS at number one for 19 points each. And I mean, that was only three extra kills that they got, but they managed to top it off. So kudos to them and LG at fourth place with six kills and 11 points. I mean, that's pretty good too. Yeah, I agree with you. I think LG, the most impressive thing for me, it's kind of, I want to talk about LG and Dark Zero very quickly. LG went for an early spot and like we saw in that zone, very difficult to hold an early spot with some of the lack of cover that you had, a lack of reset options you had in those spots. And they, they did brilliantly to navigate their way all the way through to that end game. Dark Zero, the same. They played the hype for quite some time. They were able to rack up a few KP, but in the end game where all of the somewhat playable spots were taken and they were having to run around in the open, Zero manages to route out a few more places points and that's what you need from your Bangalore so uh, kind of a tale of two different ways to play the game there from both teams but both of them did it pretty well yeah all the top 10 teams here it was a feat to get into that circle and fight for that and I do want to point out I mean hey FaZe has been able to get some KP on the board they've been able to get some points at this point with us going into the last game it's going to be a little bit tough crawling your way up to at least 10th place but i am glad to see them getting some points and native gaming still in 17th and they have not been able to get any points this round yeah surprisingly quiet game for oxygen esports but they're allowed one let's be real uh, we'll take a look at the top three <laughs> as well from uh, from that game to have a little bit of a comparison on damage etc and gks huge game uh, and you look at the damage seven kills eight assists you got 1.8k 
and 1.29k coming in respectively from Chaotic and Sorcerer. A really, really big output from them. But I just, again, I think Elevate, they need to be started to talk about as a team that maybe if they continue this performance that we've been seeing and this insane consistency we've been seeing from them are going to be a team we're going to be seeing represent North America when it comes to the Split 1 playoffs. So I think LAN is beckoning for Elevate. It's all about consistency, though. And the moment that they start to rest on their laurels, maybe get a bit overconfident, stop preparing, they can't let that happen. They can't afford to because it, North America has so much talent that that spot can be taken away. You know, we've still got a long way to go in this season. Yeah, and you bring up a good point. I mean, I think that maybe today was a great way for them to test their team and their team spirit because these zones have been so rough. It helps them prepare for all the worst situations, right? But of course, going to qualify, it does suck having to face these things. But we do get to see the series results overall right now, and it's Oxygen Esports at top with 68 total points and Dark Zero close, close behind with 51. And hey, your favorite SSG, just one point off for being in second place. Yeah, very good performances. And I will say that that Oxygen Esports zero point game, I believe it was, if my memory serves me right. Again, please come back, down to remind yes. me of the numbers. Uh, Oxygen Esports, by getting zero <laughs> points, has kind of opened things up, right? Dark Zero probably looking at it and going, hey, yeah. we got one more game left. We could win. And SSG are probably thinking, hey, we've got one more game left. We can win. Elevate. Exactly the same. So even though maybe before this game, we were saying Oxygen has done enough to maybe take home first place this week. Now it's completely wide open as to who might take that first place home. Yeah, it just shows you how much power missing one game can be for a team. And it's it's incredible. What I'm really excited to see how game six is going to pan out for us. But first, if you think you have what it takes to get into ALGS, don't worry. Challenger Circuit number two registration opens February 5th. Unfortunately, Challenger Circuit split one did start yesterday, February 3rd for North America. So just to remind you of the teams that did make it out of that, uh, we do have GKS and Elevate. GKS and Elevate as part of the challengers from qualifiers. So very excited to see what new teams we may see out of that and really excited. But hopefully uh, the circles aren't as rough for challengers. <laughs> hey, look, you got to play every single circle. You can't have ones that are pulling towards your POI where you got ring console and the center of the yeah. zone to play from. It's all about adaptability. <laughs> That is true, and I, I think I do love that about Apex, just the fact that the RNG can be all over the place. So it really makes you test your game knowledge and your rotation knowledge, um, and it really does come down to just, are we able to fight through all of this lobby? Yeah. Sometimes you can. I mean, looking at Oxygen. Yeah, I mean, Oxygen have proved that they've been up there today, but there's still a lot to play for. They might not be first place come uh, the end of the games today. Yeah, best of luck to them. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, match number six, the final one, will be ready.
been a great day of LGX action today. Amir was amazing. North America, no surprise, has been just as good as well. And the bad news is we've only got one game left. But the good news is we've still got one game left, everybody, to decide who is going to be up at the top of the standings come the end of the day. Dan, where's your money at? I love asking you this. my favorite question to ask you, by the way, before we get into the last game. Who's going to win? Because you might shoo me away if I give you an answer because you shooed me away again and then you said I had to come back. But you did good math there. We have one game left. You are correct. Who do I think is going to win it though? Oh, I'm feeling an SSG victory. I said it earlier. I think that SSG are due a, an, another one here. So we'll see whether that happens. I did shoo you away, but I will say that I begged for you to come back almost immediately. Instantly. Instantly. Re yeah. Having realized there was mathematics to if be If it makes you feel any better, so, I never yeah. left. I was always here in, <laughs> in spirit. I didn't move out of my seat whatsoever. I just wanted to get into the next game and let's get through it and let's see what happens. We've had Oxygen going back to back and putting two victories on the board and they are our lobby leaders right now, but with a slightly earlier exit in match five or a much earlier exit in the match five it has opened up the window potentially for other teams to start to catch them here keep your eyes on dark zero here everybody it's the kind of match they love when the pressure is on match six is when they start to come to life and they are within striking distance the likes of TSM, maybe the gap is a little bit too big, but a big win in game number six and certainly throw themselves up the leaderboards a little bit more as well. This is uh, the kind of game that you hope is going to be set up ahead of your final game of the day. Everything's still to play for. All the places could change. We don't know who's going to win this thing, so let's find out. Yeah, this is going to be a big opportunity for some of these teams in the mid-table situation to make something of themselves in this match day. Put a big performance down. Circle is going to play a big part, of course. We've had two very similar circles so far, which has been pretty treacherous for those on the southern side. So they'll be hoping for a, a little bit more of a favorable pull. But again, you can only play what is in front of you. But our lobby leaders, Oxygen, dropping down towards staging. Are they going to have a ring console? Doesn't look like it. So they're going to have to just play with what they can see here. And looking at this circle is not the easiest circle to try and predict if you don't have ring console information. But at least it's going to be a little further south. We're not going to epicenter again, but it's close enough for some of those teams. <laughs> if I don't have ring console right now and you go, where are we going? That's somewhere in the middle, mate. Like, just don't worry about somewhere in the middle. Of the It'll be fine. But dropping gaming, they're going to be in a very good position at landslide but we know that landslide is very difficult to coexist i, I imagine it's going to be finishing in and around the tower we do see those tower finishes uh, maybe pulling towards the truck just at the north of where we can see on that zone but for elevate i mean what an opportunity it is for them to get priority position and maybe put themselves in with a chance of winning today's gameplay one thing that we yeah. should mention as well landslide did have a ring console so maybe they can play off of the back of what dropping gaming do Yep, LG also had one at Lava Fisher, so they're going to have that information. Uh, Elevate, can they win? They are 20 points behind first place. If Oxygen were to be eliminated and Elevate were to win with eight plus kills, doable. All right, Minimal. there is a chance, and I'm going to say there is a chance. Outside of complexity, SSG, Dark Zero, very unlikely, maybe nearly impossible. So those are the three teams we're going to be keeping an eye on to try and take a victory here today. But also, we try to tell that story of guys who are in the mid-table, trying to push themselves into the top 10. As right now, Skur are taking some damage. Scurry trying to scurry away. And it looks like he's just able to get around the corner. Yeah, Scurry taking damage. Avril Alley outputting damage. However, this spot is a little bit ugly for them. You can see the sweep wants to try and really put some pressure on. Maybe get a little bit of damage to send Slayer and Funk down to finish things off. But instead, decides to retreat smartly. Complexity, they're going to be taking the truck that I mentioned a little bit earlier. And I always say this, right? Truck is playable, but very nadable. And if you haven't got a Watson gen down or a Watson to play, then those windows are a problem. The good news is... Fuse has not really been prevalent in this lobby. We're, we've seen the kind of down, downward trend of Fuse as of late with other legends becoming more viable and more important in this meta. So at least you have that on your side if you are going to be playing truck. But that doesn't mean people aren't going to be carrying nades. So you are going to be extremely vulnerable to them for sure. Uh, but as you mentioned, if you've got somewhere to play, you can definitely work with it. It might not be a game-winning play, so you may have to start thinking about where you can go afterwards and how you're actually going to win from that position. I tell you what, 
That is a care package that you want on zone one. Yeah, it's not a Kraber, it's not a wingman, but it's a bow check. And it's not the first time today that we've seen Elevate find something early in the game that's going to give them a weaponry and a damage output advantage over some of the other teams. The fact they get Digi Threat inside of this tunnel as well, plus they're running Bangalore. I mean, it, it's you could have asked for more, really, to come down off that care package. It gives them so much loot. Plus, speaking of loot, you can see a little bit of vault action. It's almost as if I forget they exist sometimes. Honestly, I, I love the bow check. Not only because I get to pretend I'm in Lord of the Rings or something, but it is just such a powerful damage dealer and you can really catch teams off guard with it. You can literally pluck them out of the sky and then your team can send it if you were able to deal that damage from a, a, a mid-range mid distance, I would say. So Elevate have that opportunity, but you're completely right. They are a real threat in this vault area and any team is going to be potentially obliterated if they walk into the unknown here. So a great spot for Elevate. Looking elsewhere, I'm just trying to see what Oxygen Esports are doing. If you're talking about vault tunnels, we did see Oxygen inside of them. If you're uh, wondering where that is, that's the one that's just to the north of Harvester. So bookending where this second zone is showing us is going to be two teams who are in the race to maybe take away first place today. Landslide, you can see up on the top of that. I believe it's Ape Gang are up on height, or maybe it's Oxygen Esports in the vicinity as well. Native having to uh, be careful because they're being chased down right now inside a monument. Yeah, Native just need to stay alive here in 14th position at the moment. They're one of the squads that need a relatively big game here to try and propel themselves up into the leaderboard so they can't afford to go down to an early fight or even lose a player in the early fight. And that's why they quickly and promptly back away from it. Even with Klain taking that amount of damage, they should be safe here, but they are slowly just trying to find a better playable area with where they are, but also... Maybe even considering, do we try and take this fight if we can get the jump on someone? Well, you do have ring console information, so they're going to be set. They know they're going to be safe in their position for at least the next couple of zones. And they can hold out, like you say, a lot of teams who try and move through Fragment, which is a safer way to rotate because there's so many buildings to do. And users cover. Here comes Optic Gaming, who, again, quiet. This, yeah, is, uh, the, this is the Optic Gaming team we were well, a fight away from winning the yeah. LGS championships and they don't look like that team at the moment they don't and uh, you know we, we spoke about why that might be at the top of the show with you know ring consoles changing in uh, their POI that they were dropping out but also they just haven't really been able to get going in the same way in the online competition now 11th isn't that bad 21 points is okay if they can stay in the top 10 then they are still going to be averaging a decent amount of points each week and should be able to get themselves towards playoffs with an average performance but I guess that's the goal, right? Everyone just wants to get to playoffs. You don't have to be the leader going into playoffs as long as you get there. Well, this is Dark Zero, and this is versus Elevate. So now we are seeing some real action take place, and Dark Zero are trying to force this. Unfortunately for Zero, the uh, Barrage isn't really going to be useful for him here because the Bangalore ult is just going to hit the mountain tops and not any bodies. So they decide to back out of this one. They also used the Beast of the Hunt. They wanted to try and get an early pick there and use everything to try and do so. But having recognized that the damage wasn't done, Dark Zero smartly back away. And that's something that I think they do very well as well, Dan. They kind of commit hard for that initial knock. They don't get it. They can escape. Very good at getting in and out, our Dark Zero. Uh, one of the reasons why they are one of the best teams in North America, if not the world, to be honest. Um, they probably realized that a Digi Threat was present as well with uh, how much shots very they true. took. So they quickly got out of that one and said, look, it's not a fight we should be taking. Speaking of fights, Black Hole goes down. Oblivion will destroy it very quickly, though. They were trying to press this building, but the Black Hole came out in a very defensive manner. They managed to get the Conduit ult in themselves as well as having to dodge the enemy one. Nobody going to be spotted, though. So I think they forced their way into the building. They're going to be safe. Native, a couple of death boxes are going to be left. One of them, the uh, one-winged angel death box, by the way. Got my first Final Fantasy VII reference in today. Oh, he's begun to again, everyone. At least we got Super to match off. 12 today, technically, before he got his first one out. But at least he managed to sneak it in for all you Final Fantasy fans. I think we should go here. <laughs> Sometimes I surprise myself with how much of a nerd I actually am. Anyway, Oblivion trying to take this fight. I'll start. Not going to have a mag on it, but we know it does some output of damage even without that. Now they're trying to move in to clean up a few of these pieces. Great spray coming in from the arm line, but Arcology's going to have to move in behind the knockdown shield. The L-Star is good for that, just to continuously output fire, and it can destroy a few lines of sight as well. The 
for the kind of blast radius that it has. They get the final kills onto Temper as well. And unfortunately for Temper, it's been a, a real learning process, this uh, this Pro League. And now, unfortunately, you're going to see the third party appear. It's going to be Flat who come in to clean things up. Well, Flat with their internet back starting to push in and starting to be aggressive on a team that they knew was going to be very weak as Oblivion might be seeing and looking into an Oblivion shortly. Looks like maybe Akimbo's going to be able to get away, but, you know, what are you going to do here? You could potentially craft banners, but at this stage of the game, it's going to be difficult, but certainly that could be a journey that he goes on. Wonder if he'll find a fellowship. Uh, that's three Lord of the Rings references, and I was giving you stick. I'm really sorry. I know, and the thing that annoyed me most about that is he's running along with a buster sword, and you go for it. It's, <laughs> it's almost sacrilegious to do that. Anyway, FaZe inside of a fight now, and... They need to win this one. It's as simple as that. FaZe need a game here. They need to be aggressive. They need KP as well as placement points if they want to be in a reasonable, and I say reasonable, not exceptional position at the end of today. They want to seize this building, and inside of this building, building is going to be Team Cream, but they can't get in for now. FaZe want to, though. Look at it. They're just desperate, but now with the barricade the coming down, that allows them to take the high ground here. They don't have to force this too quickly. Look where the circle is. They do have time, but maybe they've had a little way into the ground situation. They realize another team is quite nearby. I think it's Native Gaming who were close enough to influence this fight. But Cream have been able to get out of the building here, so it's not like they're stuck. But they're certainly in the more difficult position. Playing from low ground here, trying to take a team off the top is never fun. But look at Native. They are almost waiting waiting to get involved in this one, waiting for the knocks to happen before they join in. Yeah, Native just a duo, of course, so they're going to be waiting for an opportunity. A third party here could be really, really big for them. If they can... If they have the banner as well, they may be able to move a little bit north into the zone and get Rambo, I believe it was, who was taken down back into this game. But FaZe do want to fight this. You can see they're not happy, they're not content. They know that they are under pressure and that a fight will change. Maybe their momentum going into the final moments of this last game, if they can get there. But it looks also like an evac tower has been put down and they might be thinking about leaving. Elsewhere. Yeah, just get out of there. Sometimes <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the fight goes on too long, sometimes it is just about escaping. As our one caustic team, we just had a little uh, eye of the eagle on just to check in and see how they're doing. And it seems like they are fine at the moment. Flat eliminated. It's going to be TSM who take them down. 55 seconds until round three closes. So, FaZe and Cream, they do need to start thinking about this fight. Oh my, 1 3 2. 1 3 2, good, but not a knock. Elsewhere, just to give you an idea of what's going on with the zone, it's pulled all the way back to landslide. So, teams who have backed on the northern side, they're going to have to move. One of those teams was, of course, E8. Cream, who got initial damage, now find themselves in a bit of an awful situation. Silent HL has to move in himself. I'm pretty sure this might be a 1v1. LG have been eliminated in the kill feed in the meantime. And here comes Native. Oh, Fades have gone down. This is ugly. And now Cream might be falling as well. Native time it absolutely perfectly, and they're going to be delighted with this because, as you mentioned, a duo, they can get some loot, and there is always the potential of getting a third player back up if they have the banner. Maybe the last can escape, as now TSM, we take a look towards what's happening in their scenario. It's going to be Van Verhulst oh. does do the damage and does stay alive as Oblivion get eliminated. The man is a Terminator when it comes to those individual fights. He just wins them. It's as simple as that. He's got both banners as well. He's got an option to get a respawn in. The question is, is he going to be have anyone close enough to really cause problems with that respawn coming in? Zoni's going to force Verhulst to move forward. There's a 1v1 maybe with the cream player in front of him, but Landslide is where we're going to be going. And up on that high ground, like we mentioned earlier, still Ape Gang. And they are playing Rampart. So that is going to be a very good legend to have up on this height. Get those walls down, do a little bit of damage output, and also gives you a little bit more coverage from any teams firing on the distance. I really want Verholst to remove the E and truly become Van Verholst and just become the Dutch overlord that we know he could be. <laughs> I imagine Verholst taking a penalty and absolutely smashing <laughs> it down the middle. <laughs> Circle starting to close in now, and Dark Veils are having to be used from some of these teams that are rotating. Native being one of those, by the way. Eternal are going to be forcing their way in from the west, but Skirt and Dark Zero not going to be too far behind. And some of these teams are going to be forced together in their rotate. And, you know, when you're crossing open space in Landslide, again, similar to Epicenter, there is cover available, but after you reach that cover, if you're forced out of it, you're going to have to try and play like gladiators almost of getting to the next point of interest just to stay alive. You know what's crazy? Who's in the best position in zone right now? Oxygen, Oxygen Esports are in a fantastic position. Optic Gaming might be the only team who can really upset them. 
as they're moving through the train tunnel and might have a little bit of an angle, but also a team who could upset anyone right now. It's going to be complexity. Why? Kraber in the hands of Monsoon. Put some montage clips on the board. Four bullets. Plenty to work with. That could be four kills for Monsoon. It could be four knocks. Oxygen are going to be in a spot, though, to potentially... Even if they don't win this game, right? If they can just get to, like, the last five, they Sorry. should be able to win this entire lobby and in the overall standings. So Cream just got eliminated because Silent h &M was trying to rat his way inside and just exploded <laughs> next to the frag grenade that was thrown by Phony, I believe it was, from SSG. It just looked funny in the background. I just couldn't hold it in. I'm sorry. No, you were absolutely fine. Uh, I had a little giggle as well, but look at SSG. Look at the position they currently hold, and they're in a good spot right now, but they won't be in about two uh -oh. seconds when this circle starts to move in. Where do they go from here? You know, I predicted SSG in this last game, and I'm starting to wonder whether that might come to a very quick end shortly, as all these northern teams are going to have to move south. So Dark Veils, Evac Towers, whatever you've got to traverse this open ground, use it now. Well, a really smart decision here from Monsoon. Doesn't connect with the shot, but just using that evac, it's not about rotation sometimes. It's about getting information. Just went halfway up and decided that he's got enough of a lay of the land to try and plan a rotation for his squad. The shots aren't quite hitting for now, but one bullet can change everything. And he's only got one bullet left. Will it be a golden one? No. This time around. SSG also eliminated in the meantime as Complexity are just fighting against the zone and I think at this point hoping they can force their way in. Always have to tee it up as a maybe, but Complexity out in 11th. Down to our last 10 now. So everyone getting two placement points. Native in a real scrap at the moment. Crook's taking a lot of damage there, but Stunning might well. be able to help out. Oh, but look at the position that we see some of these squads in and the ability that they have to work with. Skirt, Albrelli as a rat. I mean, they're in 20th position. I don't even think if Albrelli was to rat his way to top five, it would really help much here. I just want him to get eight more damage so he can get purple armor. So close. It's so frustrating when you're that guy. But GKS already won one game today. Can they win another? Native Gaming will be eliminated as well. Dark Zero Day taking damage. And Albrelli as a solo takes down Jim Burton. So he's still causing problems. Maybe helping out his old uh, TSM buddies a little bit here with taking down a Dark Zero player. But Naughty also in the kill feed here for GKS that we're watching. He's got that 30 day on high. And that is a problem. So Oxygen still alive in first, Dark Zero still alive in second. After that, we're looking all the way down to seventh for GKS. So a real opportunity for GKS to start to send themselves towards that top five and catch the likes of TSM. Elevate might be a little bit too far for them, but a victory still makes it possible to push themselves into the top four as drop-in gaming eliminated in ninth. And it's not a bad position for GKS, but they will have to drop off this high ground. Always a worry when you have to drop. One team who doesn't have to drop, though, is going to be Oxygen. Look at the cover they have. If they can hold this stairwell, which is going to be the most important thing for them, they've got the catalyst to help with that with the piercing spikes as well, so they can get information to slow anyone who tries to play off the back of that staircase. They can see all of the lobby in front of them. They will be able to command so much space, but Optic are the only team, like I mentioned, who are going to be playing above them that could be a problem. Skirt are eliminated. Abrolo gave it a hell of an effort in this last game, but he will fall as we're down to our top seven. Oxygen would have to be eliminated now for Dark Zero to really have a chance of catching them in first place. So it's looking good for Oxygen, looking likely that they will be our overall winners in A and B as Eternal start to make their move. But, oh, wow, they're so quickly forced back as they just run into an absolute wall of bullets and suddenly Carter's the last remaining player and it looks like Eternal about to be sent back to the lobby as seven squads are about to become six. Can't survive for now. But by the time I finish my sentence, the sentence could be changed. Eternal will be eliminated. GK is still using the height of the crane to rain down shots. Chaotic with the car in his hand. Not the best long-range weapon, but the thermite combined with it is doing enough damage to help them maybe carve a path towards where this zone is going to be going. And Oxygen now look like they're making their move. They've escaped from the tunnel and have taken the high ground. And Optic need to be careful. By the way, GKS have found a ledge. They haven't Zero quite gone. had to drop as Dark Zero will fall. We're into the top five. And suddenly, GKS are only one point behind fifth place. They are bursting into the top five in the overalls here. But it's all about Oxygen as they look to try and get a third victory. Dark Veil will come down, but the stick is going to be everything for the damage. Pretty sure they got the stick there inside of the, the train car onto an Optic player. Saw 75 pop up, but they can't play off the back of it thanks to the Dark Veil coming in from Optic, which slows down their push altogether. But the good news is there is time on their side now, Oxygen. They can play this slowly, and they know Optic don't have that available next time to try and use. Optic also know this. They want to try and push themselves. 
Round six, about to close. Five squads. There is a solo rat, though. DNO Gaming have a solo, but uh, GKS, I think, are well aware of that below them. So I think, sadly, for the last remaining player, it's probably going to be sent on. But it is the caustic. Crust can at least go out with a little bit of smelly gas alongside himself. Drop now comes in. GKS looking to go back to back here. DNO will be eliminated. Elsewhere in the lobby, Optic still here. Oxygen still here as well. And Ape Gang, who are up on that height, make up the full complement of teams that we have alive. Optic make their move onto GKS now. They're going to jump on them. They're going to ape them. And if they shall, as Optic get the damage, but three squads remain, Optic lose one. And who does this open things up for? Oxygen Esports, as they are definitely waiting to pounce here. GKS eliminated, and now Oxygen could dive on in, because Ape Gang are trying to finish off the remaining of Optic Gaming. Fight still going down there as the 3v3v3. Optic still alive as a three. Ape Gang still alive as a three. The difference, I think, here, the difficulty here for Oxygen is they're very wary that they don't have the best armors in the world. So if they're going to commit, they have to commit strong, and they don't really see that window. Optic Gaming will be eliminated. Ape Gang trying to hold them off. Oxygen know they have to make their play right now. Big play for Oxygen. They've got the conduit as well. They have the ability to win this fight. Yes, they've got the Dark Veil down, so they don't have to force it straight away. They need to start thinking about positioning here. Try and take an angle. See if you can surprise this team. Reeds has the chance to poke and get information as well. Trying to use that conduit ult themselves, and they actually take the position underneath right now, which is brilliant. It's genius because now... Ape Gang are up on high and going to have to drop potentially into the crosshairs of Oxygen. And that's exactly what they're going to do. The difference, though, might be a digi difference. You can see the smokes go down. And now Oxygen, they start to fall themselves. Vayne is last alive. Can he do it for the squad to cap off an amazing day? The answer is no. And Ape Gang will close out the day with the final win here on World's Edge. And that sends Ape Gang up into the top seven. So we knew some of these mid-table teams would have a chance to push themselves even further. And Ape Gang do just that. And with a composition that's just a little bit different as well. Same as Amir in the final game, a team that isn't running your standard comp is able to find a victory. We don't get the three matches for Oxygen, which is a bit disappointing for them. But they are still going to be the lobby victors in the overall standing. So I don't think they'll mind too much. No bonus bonus point for Oxygen today, unfortunately, but pretty sure that they'll be happy with the position that they do end up in. It was a very strong performance from them. Uh, the, just for a second, I thought they made such a smart play to somehow manage to get underneath Ape Gang, which gave them the ability and the vision when Ape Gang had to jump off that they might get those first shots in. And of course, when you're landing off a fight, your gun's going to take a few seconds to come up itself and you're going to have those first shots. But the difference is... The digi difference, right? We talked about it all season. You don't have a digi. When the smokes go down, it causes problems. It makes it so much more difficult in those fights. And that's exactly what we saw. And congratulations to Ape Gang. We mentioned how close it was outside of the top two or three. Ape Gang might have just catapulted their way up the standings from where they were to somewhere a lot more respectable. Yeah, they really did. And there was a few teams who were probably in the top five who were dead, who were sweating a little bit with other teams able to maybe overtake and leapfrog them. But they'll be they'll be probably happy when they see that final result. I'll let the overall standings come into fruition before we start talking about it. But it is going to be a good position for some of these squads. I mean, we have to talk about Oxygen in general, but I, I'm very impressed with other squads like SSG, for example, who performed excellently today. Well, speaking of stand-ins, it's time for us to take a little look on how that match did go. Ape Gang, 22 points in total, 10 kills alongside the 12 placement points. Oxygen, though, it's all about the placement points for them. Only one kill, which is always a bit of a surprise when you see Oxygen, because they're usually a pretty kill-heavy team if they get into that final circle. 10 points will do them, though. Optic Gaming, that might have just saved the day for Optic Gaming. 12 points for them, 5 kills alongside the 7 placement points. And elsewhere, you're looking down, Dark Zero again, even though we didn't barely talked about them the entire game they didn't really seem to be in a position to cause a huge amount of influence on who was going to win that game they still pick up seven points down yeah and they still find themselves in the top three overall i believe i think they're going to be top two but wait for that confirmation uh native not able to really put enough points to push them into the top 10 in the overalls and then the bottom 10 a few teams who really needed a performance in match six were not able to find it it's a, a pretty flat day uh for phase for temper for skirt not for flat <laughs> flat actually had a, a fairly <laughs> good day with that. <laughs> i think i think flat found themselves in around 11th position so i think they'll be pretty happy with that especially considering the internet issues they had during match four.
Well, the games are done. We'll bring Stella back in to, uh, to talk about what we just saw and to kind of wrap ourselves up today. But, I mean, seeing a, seeing a little bit of a different ending there, Ape Gang with the win in our final game today. Yeah, I, I want to point out they haven't, they didn't move that entire match. They just stayed there, which was great for them. I mean, their landing zone was a great boon for them in that in that match. And uh, I was a little bitter. It's a little bittersweet because I really wanted Oxygen Esports to get that third win in the series today. But you know what? Kudos to Ape Gang. I mean, they had 10 kills, which is incredible. And I was very surprised that Oxygen only had one. So great job to Ape Gang and all the teams that participated today. Also, I do want to publicly apologize to Onset because he was right with the bonus point situation. It's very rare, <laughs> right? I will say that he is way, right with this one. I am going to fully hands up and say I am as surprised as you are. Okay, <laughs> I am just as surprised as you are. Usually you are 100% correct when it comes to this stuff. And this is a, I will say, more of a worrying moment for me to be correct when it comes to numbers than it is a celebratory one. So, Honestly, yeah, that's terrifying. It's, it's the board game nerd in me reading more than 50% and taking it too literally <laughs> that I thought it had to be four wins. But alas, we got confirmation from admins. Three wins would have got a bonus point. It does not, though. We still don't yeah. see an NA team picking up bonus points yet. Yeah, I, we were so close to that. I really wanted to see it because I really wanted to claim it, but you know, it's all right. There's also there's there's always next time. But you know, let's go ahead and take a look at the series results so far and take a look at how everyone is standing. Oh, my bad. We're gonna go right into the final circles. So sorry. Time for us to have a little look back. Let's have a look at this then. This was the game that Oxygen did win from up on that high ground. We saw SSG facing off against DZ. And then, of course, we did have OXG up on the high ground. And I will say, acronyms are wonderful before I get into the analysis of this final circle. But it was, of course, Oxygen that had to move last. And Dark Zero recognized that. They tried to force the fight onto SSG. A couple of knocks went down on either side. And it just, it was a very, very simple third party to, for Oxygen Esports. Probably one of the easiest situations you could find yourselves in in uh, one of these LGS lobbies down. Yeah, I think there was uh, a chance that maybe the damage could have been done quick enough by the team that they had to fight against in the end, SSG. But because SSG lost one to Dark Zero, it was always going to be just easy pickings from this point for Oxygen. Oxygen almost helped SSG, but did enough to make sure that it was going to be an easier fight as they came into it. And I think they'll be uh, pretty happy with being able to pick that one up, especially considering their rotation in match number four. And then match number five, I mean, it was a similar rotation for Oxygen, but they weren't able to get as far this time, and they found themselves dipping out a little bit earlier on. But a somewhat similar circle, this time it was closer towards Epicenter, and it was GKS this time, who were in that same position that Oxygen were, where they were just hoping that one of the squads that happened to move first would send it on the other. You try and deal the damage on the team that's crossing to make that fight last, or, or, or go a little bit quicker, and then you join the fight. Yeah, we did see DNO and Elevate just push into a fight, trying to get that extra KP here, like Onset called out, and they did end up getting it, but of course they did end up getting eliminated in second place as well. But GK has did take the win here quite easily. I mean, they just swept in and cleaned up the rest of the rubble. Yeah, I mean, this is two examples of probably the easiest games to win when you get to those final moments, right? We always see crazy end circles. This one's huge. It was a very rough zone for everyone to get into, which you saw why you saw three teams having so much space to play with. But this end game was probably one of my favorite that we saw today on World's Edge. I think Ape Gang took the fight against Optic Gaming, won the fight against Optic Gaming. The wall comes in from Oxygen, and I thought that Oxygen had made such a smart play to walk up and manage to get underneath Ape Gang, who were up on the top of that track. So I thought they had it won, but the Digi difference. We saw Oxygen, they rotated pretty quickly. They don't have Digi threats. They don't have the, the loot difference that Ape Gang did have up on height, having taken a few fights themselves. So that just made it difficult, right? You can't fight through the smokes and get that damage down quite as quickly. Oxygen, you can see, moving in here, they would have got those first shots, but the difference is, I think a smoke goes down here just for a second. Might have actually been Vayne who helped Ape Gang out a little bit here, Dan, and then we just saw the final shots being hit. Yeah, we heard Church in the halftime say she'd like to see Digi's change maybe going into Season 20 because they are such a big factor in how fights can go down, especially with the prevalence of Bangalore. What, we had a 95% pick rate of Bangalore in one of those games earlier today, but those are the final standing, Stella, as we had alluded Ooh. to. Oxygen <laughs> will lead the charge. 78 points on the board, but Dark Zero takes second. 
Yeah, and SSG is not too far behind them, neither is Elevate. And it's really incredible that Oxygen Esports kind of took a break in one of their games and they were able to come back with 78 total points today. That's incredible. Very impressive from Oxygen. The change of POI, crazy how it works, right? Just a little bit of confidence. Barometer felt comfortable <laughs> for them on Storm Point, and it all really did start there. But I think there's a couple of teams to talk about. Elevate as well, up in the top four once again. Consistent points week after week after week coming in from Elevate. And even though TSM, we barely mentioned them today, still finish in sixth place overall. That's consistency. That's what gets you to these LAN events. That's what gets you through tough lobbies when it comes to LAN. It's not about a monster game every game. It's about making sure you put points on the board and enough points on the board to put yourself into good positions. Yeah, and you talked about Ape King. I mean, look, they're in seventh place right above complexity and their kills are nothing to sniff at either. I mean, they both played really well. Ape King had a really great game. And I mean, complexity showed up, especially with one of their teammates kind of being at a disadvantage and having a sub for their first game, Gaskin. Yeah, I mean, that's always going to be frustrating in the initial game, but I think complexity bounced back successfully. And, you know, eight points is, oh, sorry, eighth position is nothing to be sniffed at. I think they'll be fairly happy with that overall performance, with especially with the issues that they had to face today. And this is how it's going to look overall then. The overall league standings, the season standings here in Pro League after three series played for A and B. Remember though, C have still not played their third series. So Dark Zero very firmly in first place. LG and TSM tied in second place at the moment. But SSG, they're starting to creep up behind them. Elevate also very close. And then down a little bit further, you start to see teams teeter off ever so slightly there's a bit of a gap between seven and eight but a chance for moist and furia to catch up when they compete next week yeah i would be a little bit worried if i were there but look at all the points from 11th to 20th place they're all so close together it's anyone's game to be able to move up into the first 10 teams here and we do see that dno and phase are still in the top 20 so that's great for them on set it's great for now but just remember a few of the teams just in behind them have only played well, have played, I should say, one less game day. So that might change very, very quickly for them. A couple of teams are keeping my arm, by the way, for the next game day. Exit. They need a day. And I'm sure they'll be able to put one in uh, when it really does matter. Because one performance from them, they can completely change things around. We see how tight it is. One, top four, top three, top two, top one for Exit. And all of a sudden, we're talking about them maybe being a contender to go back to land and maybe being a contender for a title. Yeah, I think all the points being so close together, it really shows that the top 10 or top 20 can be anyone's game. So it's going to be really interesting to see the matches next week. And I don't know, do, do you guys want to speculate on who might be the top three? I'm going to start with you, Onset. Top three of the next next set of matches. Next set of matches? I thought you were going to say top three in North America when it comes to the end of it. And I was like, that's a much easier question. I prefer that <laughs> oh, one. Oh, really? You think you. so? Okay. Yeah, 100%. And do you know what? I'm going to change the question. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> the question. At least I didn't get chewed. So, yeah, uh, sure. I'm being question. very rude today. I'd like to apologize, actually. I don't know what's got into me. Maybe I'm just... Uh, it's, I, it's, I mean, it's I knighted you and it just went to your head, you know? Yeah, maybe that's it, it. I, I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I apologize. Um, I'll answer your question. <laughs> Go on, then. Thank you. I can see Moist and Fury performing well, right? They, we saw in the overall standings how close they were. So when they start to get involved, if they're playing next week, then they're going to be in, like a fantastic position to start to catch teams here. They'll be watching everything, kind of biting at the bit, waiting to get involved, waiting to play. And I think there's a lot of teams who want to prove themselves. And I think Moist is definitely one of them. I agree. Moist yeah. and Furia, definitely. Yeah, I was going to say Moist is probably my pick for coming out on top next week. But speaking of teams that performed incredibly well today, we want to talk about our MVP today which is Vayne from Oxygen. I mean, Oxygen Esports just performed incredibly out of their minds today, kind of brutalizing half the lobbies, if we're real. I mean, they won two matches today and they were just able to work so well together. It wasn't just about the damage and kills, but also about their survivability and ability to adapt to difficult situations, which we saw a lot of the circles were not in their favor, but the rotations were on point and like Gaskin said, their patience was a huge boon to them in winning those two matches and gaining points. But we can't count out their damage and kills because those were impressive. I mean, the points really speak for themselves and the current standings. But I, I do think that the circles today testing specific teams' abilities to switch up strategies and showcase their game knowledge and confidence in Apex was key in Oxygen feeling really confident 
And I think that's why we should name Bane the, <laughs> I love this pose, the MVP of today on set. I love that. Yeah, 100%. I think you look at his kills and assists, 11 a piece that shows that he's outputting damage as well as finishing off kills and by the way Vayne is quite a, I would say a quiet character and I love that we've got this picture for him because it kind of like lies about his personality <laughs> he's usually, but it is certainly I think he's going to be feeling like that after the performance today and understandably so I think uh, he's had an amazing day I think the oxygen will feel I think a combination of of happy and also a little bit relieved after what has been the first two quiet game days for them and i think this is them back to form and it's what like i mentioned when we were talking about them earlier it's what i expected to see from them coming into this season yeah and i'm so happy for you because we talked about them at the top of show and here they are doing exactly that and also goody for you we're also going to be able to talk to reeds who is currently waiting for us and we're going to do a quick little interview hello hello how are you <laughs> good so what's changed since the last two match days i mean you've probably learned a lot from playing against the two groups and what did you apply from that to today's matches yeah so the biggest change we made was um switching to barrow from uh, command center and also just like the play style of like instead of early rotating everything because uh, we had two really good like zone pis um but it wasn't really our play style it wasn't our strength so we switched back to barometer and started playing a little bit more edge, either taking fights on edge or ending up in good spots off third round consoles. Yeah, that's the biggest change we've made. I want to talk a little bit about the the switch. Uh, by the way, hi Reed, hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, and because it's uh, you made the change to command and it didn't work for you for whatever reason, we won't go into why, but the change back to barometer today, it just like, it, it looked like it completely revitalized you as a team. Is that just because you're so ingrained on the macro and how you want to play from barometer or is it something else that is just a comfort on your rotates or just the lobby worked out the way that you wanted to do what was the difference today especially going back to barometer yeah it's definitely a big com comfort thing like um i don't think barometer is an insane pi per se but just being able to have access to good loot and just like the comfortability on like macro um was huge so and you were very yeah, close got, to got making it zones, three too. victories today. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah for a little, sure. A little but you guys were we kind of through the last game, but can't be mad about that. And were you aware that, you know, bonus points were potentially on the line for that third game as well? Yes. Third victory? Yeah. I, I kept saying, like, we got to win I don't want to rub it in, but... <laughs> you are, dude! <laughs> Close to making history in North America, getting a bonus point. But I mean, talk me through your squad. What do you think makes the difference from Oxygen? Like, what is it that sets you apart from the rest of the lobby? Uh, I think it's a lot of our chemistry um, together. Like, me and Aiden have been playing together since console days. And then we picked up Van. It was a perfect fit for our team. And yeah, just, just a lot of chemistry, a lot of playing together. And um I think that's the biggest thing, yeah. Figuring out our roles over time, you know, we've had, we definitely had a rough patch, right? Um, we were trying out some stuff like adjusting roles on the team and things like that. But yeah, it kind of did a full circle back to uh, how we were playing before. And yeah, that's the result. Yeah, so obviously we saw in one of the matches where you did kind of pull back with your team and you chose to watch the last two teams fight. So what it, I'm curious, what is the clear sign for your team to push a fight? Um, the thing about our team is I feel like we don't need a lot of entry damage to it. It's really like, it's, it's a decision that we make based off of macro. Like, will this help us, you know, get a spot or something? And if it does, like, we don't need damage or people just push you. And if we do get damage and we don't need the spot, if it's a good enough damage, like we'll also just push you. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I'll, so I'll jump in with one more question. Sorry, Stella, to yeah, jump yeah, go in. Go ahead. No, no, go um, ahead. Oh what, my God. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> what can we what can we expect on World's Edge from you guys? Because it felt like today on Stormpoint, you went back to Barometer and you got that win and you had some really solid games. And it felt like your confidence kind of flowed into uh, World's Edge. Talk me through some of those zones on World's Edge because they were some pretty rough zones to try and navigate towards the end. I mean, we saw, I think, three or four teams alive in as Zone 6 started to close, which is something we're not familiar with seeing in World's Edge. Usually we have a lot more teams alive, but how do you play those particular zones in comparison to ones where there's a lot more playable space? Um, yeah, so 
I think it was a lot of momentum. You know, we came into World's Edge like feeling really good. And um I honestly don't even know how we got in some of those zones. Like the I think it was like a South Climatizer, like South Climatizer near Survey or whatever. Um yeah, that zone, I don't know how we got in that. We were just flowing and uh <laughs> rotating through the middle of the lobby, like just trying to not take too much attention on us and found a good third party. Yeah. Um how we play the lobby are different based on how many teams are live? I don't really know. Like, I, I don't know how to answer that, to be honest. It's, it, it's kind of just intuition, I guess. Well, thank you so much for trying to explain it. I mean, listen, there's a reason why you're the pro player, and we're here to ask you the question. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with us. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Oh man, I feel like I could just talk to these pro players like all day because I'm so curious about there's so much stuff that goes on in the moment that I don't think I could pay attention to. And it's it's a whole other beast on set. I think it's completely true. I will say that I think Oxygen of one of the best stories in Apex Legends. I think that that lineup in particular, uh, I know that Jayhawks covered it ex you know, extensively, he did a great piece at Champs as well. Uh, to really cover their story. If you watch today and you're watching for the first time, you want to know a bit more about them, go and watch it because it, they really are kind of the, the rags to riches of Apex Legends. It's a group of guys who started playing together, playing through arenas, playing BRs, then had success there and have just grown into one of the best teams in the world, not just North America. So uh, it's great to hear from them. Great to see them back at the top as well and finding success because like you said, they had a little bit of an off patch, but every team goes through that, right? Even the great teams. And I think it's just good to see them back on top. Yeah, absolutely. Gaskin, how did you feel about the matches today? I mean, obviously you and Onset worked your butts off today, bringing all of the action to us. But how did you feel about today's matches compared to last week's and, and the last uh, series? Yeah, I mean, I'll compare it, I guess, to the last time we saw A and B going up against each other. And we saw kind of similar teams show that they can still get it done in this lobby. But Oxygen was the biggest difference that we had. Clearly, that's the easy storyline to go with here. And I'll follow Mark a little bit in just that you heard... He, he was even talking about the console days, right? I remember watching a <laughs> arena tournament where these guys were competing whilst playing on console, and I was like, you know, this, this looks a little bit suspicious, some of the shots that they're hitting, but they were just that good, and then they turn it into playing in Battle Royale. It, it's been an incredible rise, and I think that they have shown great versatility in the way that they approach the game, but also the hardships that they've been through, been able to change certain things, and as you mentioned, it's always good to pick their brain and see kind of why they made these changes of POIs, why they try and approach the game in this way, and uh, very happy, happy for Oxygen in their rise. Yeah, me too. I Listen, I didn't go into this thinking that Oxygen was going to be one of my teams to watch going forward, but now they are. And especially with all of their insight, they are just an incredible team. But thank you to you both for speaking with me today and bringing us all the action. We are going to be taking a look at the teams coming up next week who are going to be playing, which is going to be groups A and C facing off yet again. I'm super excited. And that is going to start with EMEA at 10 a.m. PT or 6 p.m. GMT, if you're in that time zone. And it is going to be a blast. I mean, we have UAIM coming back in and we saw them play and it was just incredible. I mean, they're one of the top teams that I have been looking at and we have constantly discussed on this show. And I think that they're just going to be bringing their A game as well. And don't forget NA, it will also be showing the same day next week on February 10th at 3 p.m. PT or 11 p.m. GMT. So all on the same day, a ton of Apex, Aurora's coming back and we're gonna be seeing them dominate, hopefully. But of course, another team that we have to talk about that I think I think it was Gaskin and I talking about it as well. We are going to be seeing Moist come back. So that's going to be an interesting team to watch in NA, especially since we do have groups A and B. We do have their roster up and we did get to see how they performed today coming back after the round robin run. So very excited to see how the action is going to shape up. And again, that is February 10th next weekend. Mark your calendars. And again, it starts with Amiya at 10 a.m. PT or 6 p.m. GMT. All right, well, thank you so much for watching today, y'all. Just in case you miss any of the action, don't worry, we've got you covered. You can watch all the highlights at, on Play Apex Esports on X or YouTube and Twitch. And thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you to our producers. Thank you to our amazing players who played out of their minds today and bringing us incredible action to cast. Thank you to my casters. And 
you know what? We'll see you on the dropship. See you next time. I'm gonna try and make a move down through the, the low ground here, which is risk, complexity, Dark Zero, SSG, all in fantastic spots, and Snipe Down is a confidence player. Step up, and you will get absolutely buzzed from the other side.